Shit, I don't know what the fuck happened, but we're good now. But to answer your question, to mute all mods, I'll do it for 30. As they all come in, I'll just mute each one of them. Since that's like a bundle price. There you go. Zero four Alpha Tron with the two. Keep dreaming. Yeah, that fucking PlayStation price hike today was some bullshit, though. $80 for fucking basic ass online? Like, are you fucking shitting me? No, you can change the amount, Brit. You just have to, like, click on the actual number and type it in. <laughs> to do the full. I can't afford this shit. Forgot to put the poll on. Will Starfield have console mods? Probably post-launch. But yeah, I would assume so. Unless Bethesda has a sudden change of heart, I would assume that like all the features they have on all their other games will be there. I mean, they've already like said, like, we're doing this with mod support specifically in mind, so I would assume so. Sounds like they've already kind of like planned for people to be able to mod it. I mean, it's a Bethesda game, so that's kind of what they're known for. It's having, like, that, uh, really... Oh, what's that fucking word? That's a cute farm. Oh my god, thanks, Brit. I thought so too. It's so quaint and humble. But yeah, I need beets to go trade with the fucking slave laborers in the other villages. Yup, that's the plan to stream uh, Starfield. So I almost said Skyrim, bro, because like we were talking about that last night that I kind of want to play st <laughs> fucking Skyrim over Starfield. Oh my god. Dude, Skyrim just hits. Elder Scrolls is the superior Bethesda game. Hands down.
Ah, uh, seriously, I fucking forgot. Yeah, dude, he literally said that he didn't really like Skyrim that much. It was their worst game. Like, Skyrim was his least favorite Bethesda game. It's like, bruh. I'm not one to call an opinion wrong, but that is the wrong fucking opinion. Who said that? Uh, some ordinary gamers. He said that uh, Skyrim is Bethesda's worst game. Let's see. Let's get some potatoes for the, uh... <laughs> Never mind, I can't call them that on stream. Fuck. I'll get in trouble. Uh, people in chat saying Skyrim isn't interesting. You're probably 12, honestly. Or they're just trolling. You gotta remember that too, bro. We got some masturbators in here. Like, I'm key, for example. Skyrim and Oblivion are peak Bethesda, bro. They curb stomp the fuck out of any Fallout game. Be honest, am I in a racist chat? Uh, no, because if people are actually being racist, they get banned, so... I would say your best bet is no. That's like one of the two things you get banned for in this chat, is like posting a bunch of racist shit and spamming, so... Yeah, I would, uh... Venture to say that, no, this is not a racist chat. <laughs> Considering that's like one of the very few things you can actually get banned for. Come on, you nasty potato eater. All right. I took all of their monies. Griffin making the monies in game. That's right, man. Even if I'm broke in real life, at least I have some cash in Minecraft.
Dude, I got some absolute fucking steals on some Final Fantasy cards recently. Like, I've been picking up these $200 Tifa cards in auctions for like 50 bucks. It's like insane. I don't know what the fuck is the problem, but like, they consistently sell on Buy It Now for like $150 to $250. And I've just been snatching them for like $40, $50 graded in a fucking BGS 9.5. <laughs> so it's just retarded, man. I've just been buying them up. It's like a 3X every single time I get them. I've gotten like 8 so far. But like all the auctions end at like these really weird times. Like 3 p.m. in the afternoon, 5 a.m. in the morning. Like, it's just damn. Fucking dipshits, man. They don't even know how to list things on eBay. You gotta time it right. Griff, you more of a bulk or cut physique? I would say overall cut, but I want to be, like, toned. I don't want to be, like, fucking... <laughs> I don't want to be swole, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I want to be, like, lean but toned. I'm not trying to like pop out of my fucking shirt or some shit like that. I just kind of want to fill the uh, fill the sleeves and have like some mass to my arms and chest, and then I'm good. I don't really care about anything else. Have you seen since the review of Ma no? Did he make a review for it? Shit. Did he like it or nah? Because I know he was, like, complaining while playing it, but it wasn't anything. Like, oh my god, I fucking hate this game. Yeah, we'll have to check that out, man. He said it's a 6 out of 10. <laughs> well, to be fair, like, doesn't Synthetic Man say, like, a uh, 6 to a 7 is, like, standard for video games these days? So... It's not super surprising. I didn't want to plant potatoes here. I want radishes. I want to put the potatoes in the middle portion over here. It's really irritating how you have to use a fucking crafting table to make haystacks. with the two if I don't know 50 can you play resistance 3 on PS5 is resistance 3 even on PS5 I didn't think they ported that I know they did uncharted but I didn't think they did uh resistance resistance 3 isn't on P yeah that's what I thought I didn't think they did like a port of that for PS4 One with the two. Let me see. I'll open it up. So. Oh God. Weak, but we 
chained our hearts in vain. We Bruh. Never ask him why. We kissed, I fell under your spell of love. No good denying. Don't you ever say I just walked away. Pablo Herb with the five will saying Skyrim is Bethesda's worst game isn't a low bar. You could change the words around and say Skyrim is their least great game. Well, I mean, technically that falls into the category of Fallout 76, bro. <laughs> so you got to be careful. I don't know, dude. I don't think I don't think Fallout 3, New Vegas, Fallout 4 holds a candle to Skyrim personally, especially on cultural relevance. Like, I would say Skyrim is way more fucking relevant than Fallout's ever been. Like, Skyrim's on a different level than any of other Bethesda's games. Break your walls, yo, hell yeah. Breaking some walls, dude. Alright, let me see. Why is my chat frozen? Hold on. The chat's frozen on. Give me a second. And instead he goes in forest. I guess I should have let you win. I never meant to start a war. I just wanted you to let me in. I guess I should have let you win. Okay, there we go. That was weird. Don't you ever say one with the two, it's on premium service of PSN on the cloud. Hmm. I don't have the cloud tier. So I would have to see, like, how much they're going to try to charge me to, like, upgrade. Because I believe the only way you can upgrade is you have to, like, pay out the remainder of your, uh like existing subscription so i'd have to check how much that's gonna cost because i only have the extra tier i don't have the premium uh doom boom with a five dsp sings it get that money all right then because you have to pay like a pretty big upgrade cost i know between those two it's like 60 bucks a year God. Excuse me. That was absolutely disgusting. I'm drinking seltzer. Excuse me. I'm very gassy this morning. Maybe that's why I don't have super tanks. Because people are so revolted watching my content. They run for the toilet and vomit everywhere. It could be. But anyway. Down in Texas, yeah. Get that you on Mexico. Uh, selling beer, you can make me at the Texas go. Yeah, I'm the guy in the beer from my neck on glow. What we do, right? And no one will ever know my weak <laughs> medical. I put it on a pedestal. If you find that where I hide it, you'll be next to go. Or like Bruh. It's my word in my testicles. <laughs> I'm a carnivore. I turn into old vegetables. <laughs> Off this henny in this draw, I feel invincible. Uh, Every time I do a crime invincible, this the pinnacle makes me up the petty gold. Selling dope is like my voice is fresh right off the board. Smoking dope, doing cannonballs of my boat. Did I mean G D? I got the brief read on my boat. Look at it, yeah. My body made of gold. You probably think 
that you bought out of control and yeah god created you in seven days get that money seven nights <laughs> in seven days let there be light through my blood could look purple haze be no <laughs> evil see no evil to my gucci shades Make this girl <laughs> is a ghetto so you gotta pray that's the reason that I breathe about air and part the seas like my blood for the red and blurred. I'm gonna give my cut like paper burn. 32 okay, 22 it can be. That's not a lot of other people but me distraught. Don't as my FHD. Yes, I'm getting paid. I'm a boss now. If you do good, you'll get a raise. Look good in Ferragama. Sitting on the This is Griffin's life story. Hey, man, I do have some Gucci shades, so maybe. This kind of sounds like Krispy Kreme, bro. Or should I say Froggy Fresh, whichever one you want to pick. But, dude, this unironically sounds like him, though. <laughs> it sounds like fucking uh Krispy Kreme or whatever his fucking name was. The same fucking cadence. Fill me up with alcohol like a human kid till it get on a new thing she fair to prayer. I got the thing that I'm serving eating at my farm. My man been dreamer being nervous, right in my car. I'll have a drinks. I'm so thirsty. Found me at the ball. I get the bang firstly. I don't know who you are. If it Driven flexes his purse. Amen, bro. Hey, hey. Nothing but Jordans in them totals, that's my outfit. Go out and for a bitch and let your woman house it. Bit back home and all my dick, that's what her mouth said. Yeah, <laughs> Tripping like a boss to it. RTU banned you? What'd you do, man? Feet ain't come out yet. Trade bowling. What did you do? This cush I'm smoking down the hard in a mouth. Bruh, this fucking song. Holy shit. I don't really ask no meaning. The push and taking time. But believe before I finish was like eight times. But when you thought I'm finished, can't have called him a fat racist. Okay. That makes sense then. That's like the worst thing you can call rich, bro. The word racist means something to him, which is fucking stupid. Because if you're not racist, why the fuck do you care if someone calls you racist? It'd like be if somebody called me a rapist or some shit, I'd be like, oh, okay, whatever, retard. You know? It's like, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Call me what you want. It ain't true, so if it don't apply, let it fly. Otherwise, you're saying, oh, yeah, this is how you can, you know, irritate me. I get everything. I think so. Yeah. Tomorrow will be toxic? That's an understatement, man. That is an understatement. It's gonna be fucking wild tomorrow with the review scores. Nah, there's people way fucking worse in RTU's chat than uh, R. Kelly. You'll be fine. Are you not hyped for it at all? I'm personally not hyped for it, man. I'm not really hyped. But it takes a lot for me to get excited for video games, and... If this was an Elder Scrolls game, yes, I would be hyped. But I'm not really a huge Fallout guy, and that's what this game looks like, Fallout in space, which is fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's just not really the type of game that I, like, get hyped for, if that makes sense. I'll play it, but I'm not, like, bursting at the seams excited for it. I'm more of a fantasy fan than a sci-fi fan, personally. But do I think the game's going to be good? Yeah, 
I think so. Bethesda has a really good gameplay loop, in my opinion. And even though I'm not the biggest Fallout fan, I really enjoyed Fallout 4, so... I think it'll be good. But I'm not, like, hyped for it. I agree, man. We absolutely need Elder Scrolls 6 ASAP. It's going to be out in 2026 at the earliest. So don't hold your breath. So, Juan with the two. Let's see what this is. Oh, shit. Oh, God. This fucking song. Is it gonna play? Oh, there it goes. Oh, dude. It's been like at least eight years since I've heard this shit. And I did not need to fucking hear it again, even with an AI cover. Ask you, ask you with the two who's ready for the Super Mario Wonder Direct tomorrow. Oh my God! Me, 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 me. Bruno is dreamy. Yeah, he's a cute little twink, isn't he? I hate this song, bro. I remember when this song came out, dude. I fucking absolutely hated it. I think I was in, like, middle school when this came out, or elementary school. I don't fucking remember. It's old. Can someone pay $10 to mute the song? Absolutely. Did I hear Starfield Imagine Dr- Ew! No, I don't want to. Uh-oh, the AI's failing. That's old? Yeah, dude. This song's a little younger than I am. I know for a fact they played this at my fucking middle school dances, so I'm pretty sure this came out like when I was in like fifth grade or something. Oh fuck! I didn't want to do that, I wanted to sleep! Shit. This song's making me uh, inadvertently commit suicide. It's subconsciously pushing me to the edge, guys. I'm 25, man. This is an older song. Yeah, the AI is struggling on this one, man. Do you know what the worst Bruno Mars song is? The wor- Alright, actually there's two. The worst one, I think, is the 24 Karat Magic song. That song is like literal fucking AIDS. And then second would have to be Uptown Funk. Those two are the most overplayed, overrated, dog shit fucking songs to ever exist. Grenade is not as bad as those two. I would listen to Grenade over fucking Uptown Funk and 24 Karat Magic or whatever the fuck it's called. 
Both of those songs are literally garbage. Yes, Uptown Funk is Bruno Mars. Fuck, dude. I have a really edgy joke, but I can't say it because somebody goes, oh my god, he's being serious, man. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. It's like actually something that probably would get me fucking banned, bro. Like, it's high-key pretty fucking racist, but yeah, nah. Nah. Say it, no one will clip it. Dude, there's people that record these entire fucking streams. That's cap. <laughs> That's absolute fucking cap. Just think of... Alright, so... Let's just say that movie comes from a certain time period in human history. And certain laws would have existed during that time period. That's all I'll say. Like... Think of it in the context of it being from a fucking movie soundtrack. And what years did that movie take place? And what type of laws might have been in place? That's all I'm going to say, bro. Because I ain't trying to get fucking canceled, even if it's a fucking joke. Like, it ain't worth it. Because somebody will fucking clip that shit and try and get me banned. Even if I'm, like, literally not being serious. Oh, yeah, there's tons of little fucking turds that, like, try to start shit off of fucking stream clips. It's stupid. You can't have fun on the internet anymore, guys. You gotta be, like, really fucking careful with what you say. I mean, you saw fucking Karen Timus making his fucking video about the guy who said, Oh, my God, I like the fuck... You know. Making the fucking pedo joke. And he took that shit seriously. He's like, oh, my God, he deserves to be banned, bro. He made a joke. So, yeah. Unfortunately, in today's online climate, you can't make jokes that could be slightly perceived as overly edgy, or else people will take it fucking seriously. Oski Waski with the two. We bullied any guy that listens to this. No mercy. That's smart, man. Just like we used to like bully kids to fucking tears over watching Twilight, even if they watched it with their sister. Seven inches? That's pretty big. An even star with a five hope starfield turns out to be very good. But man, if it gets under 90 on Metacritic, I can already feel the Xbox going full blast on Twitter. Sorry, X. Well, they'll say it's media bias, man. It's media bias. That's their new... Well, it's not new. It's very old. Apparently, they forgot the entire 360 generation where Xbox had literally the highest rated first party games of any of the console manufacturers. But apparently, ever since the inception of Xbox, according to fucking Xbox, the media has had a hate boner for their console and literally want it to disappear. Yeah, I think 87 is where it's going to land. That's what Fallout 4 did, so that's my guess. But hopefully it's better, man. I don't know. I want it to be good. Well, with the two, speaking of clowns, is Fousey in jail yet? He's under mental health fucking evaluation being held by the police right now. So technically, in a sense, yeah, he's not allowed to leave. He's been there for, I think, about a week at this point.
Yeah, Fuzzy definitely needs a fucking straight jacket, man. Oh shit, I have to use multiple unless they're like already halfway. Potatoes are so easy to multiply, it's nice. That's why they're enjoyed by broke bo- <laughs> Fucking broke ass bitches like the Irish around the world. Griffin giving that crunchy ASMR. Yeah, you know, I was inspired by my boy Dreamcast guy, so I'm eating a plate full of uh, onions. I was grinding in my favorite RPG before I went on stream. You all don't like salt, like fucking uh, pan seared onions and shit? Like, onions are good. Y'all need to buy, so there are these special type of onions called Vidalia onions. And I think they come from Georgia but they're like a sweet onion. And they're really fucking good if you just chop them up into like big chunks, um, you know, pan sear them until they're like slightly light brown, a little burned on the edges. Top fucking tier, man. Especially if you've cooked meat in your like cast iron pan prior because then all the meat juice and flavor gets absorbed into the onions as they like release their juices. And, um, it, like, basically, uh, deglazes the pan, so all of the meat flavor comes out of the pan and into the onion. Like, it's really good, bro. Like, I don't know. So, I did, like, some ground beef the other day. So, the pan still had, like, all the beef grease and stuff in it, so I just threw in three onions, sautéed them, and that's what I'm eating now. I love cooking in a cast iron pan. Do I like eggs? Yeah, I like eggs. But dude, one of my favorite things... Oh, make sure you also put salt on the onions, too. That's important. Put a generous amount of salt on the onions when they're in the pan. Because it helps release the uh, juices. That's another crucial point. Yeah, I like zucchini, squash, all that type of stuff. I like a lot... I like, like, probably 90% of vegetables. So, I'm a big fruit and vegetable guy. Dude, I always cook with my cast iron pan. I don't even use non-stick anymore. Like, I only pretty much use cast iron. What's a vegetable I don't like? Steamed broccoli. I don't mind stir-fried or raw broccoli, or if broccoli's like cooked in the soup or something like that, I don't mind it. But steamed broccoli, I don't like. There's something about the consistency and the like flavor that comes from steaming broccoli that's just really repulsive to me. But if it's like stir-fried, like in Chinese food or something like that, I think it's great. So, it just depends. I don't like it when it gets squishy, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That's when broccoli releases like a really nasty flavor, is when it gets really soft. What fruit do I hate? Uh, bananas, cantaloupe, 
honeydew. Um, red delicious apples. I hate those. Um, I'm trying to think. What's another fruit I don't like? So the good fruits? Hell nah, bro. Green apples are like top tier. Strawberries are top tier. Blueberries are great. Uh, green grapes are really good. That's another one. Red grapes. I don't like those. Or the like dark purple ones, whatever color you want to call them. But yeah, I don't like uh, red grapes. I love green grapes though. Blackberries are good. Oranges are good. Grapefruits are good. Tangerines are good. Watermelon's good. Dude, I just have this insane urge to farm. Our number one fruit at the store I work at is watermelon. Watermelon's solid, man. Watermelon is actually like a superfood. It has one of the highest amounts of, like, minerals and, uh, I think it's, like, antioxidants or some shit. But, yeah, watermelon is extremely good for you. Uh, Jim Ryan with the five. Take zucchini, chop it in circles, cheese, tomato paste with chili flakes. Put it in oven, and they're like little pizzas. It'll satisfy your pizza craving. Yeah, I'll try that at some point, man. Dude, I really have been enjoying like experimenting with a uh, chili recently, though. I've made like a bunch of different types of chilies and the prep time is like insane though. Like I spend way too much time making fucking chili. Like chili is supposed to be easy, but I'll spend like four to five hours like total fixing it sometimes. No, there's no maybe option. You've probably decided by now if you're going to play it tomorrow or not. There's no need for a maybe. It's a pretty straightforward answer. Yes or no? Are you playing it tomorrow? Ew, you have to work? Only a sucker works a 9 to 5. I should know. I do too.
Yeah, dude, my uh, dream in life is to become a house husband. And the only responsibility I have every day is to give my wife a kiss on her way out to work. Wife, husband, don't matter as long as I don't got to work. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, my plan is to be done working pretty early in life, so... So whether it's me having to work for the next 10 years or whoever, I don't really care. I know exactly how to be done. All I need is the monies. And then I'll be free, bruh. I just need three million bucks. Whether that be in property, cash, stocks, whatever, or Pokemon cards. Do I hate Amber Alerts? Uh, yes and no. It gives me a good idea of whether or not, you know, they're on to me or not yet. Can I tell you the plan for not working? Yeah, it's very easy, man. You basically need to amass. All right, so let's put it this way. Let me pull up my calculator because it's easier just to do the math. <laughs> um, calculator. So, this shit's really fucking easy. So, Everybody, give me your number for what you think is a good amount of money that you could live off of every year and not have to work. How much is, like, a good annual income? Like, if you could be guaranteed a certain amount of money per year and you never had to work again, what would that number be? 80k, 150k. Alright, let's just go with 80k because that's pretty realistic. So, $80,000. So, this is pretty straightforward. So, you need $80,000 divided by, which this is the average rate of like the SP 500, 8% per year. So, if you earned 8% on your money every single year, this is how much you would need to have invested or earning you money in order to make $80,000 a year. Oh, I think that fucked up. Let me see. Yeah, it did. Um, So 80,000 divided by 0 0.08. There we go. You would need exactly $1 million. So... This is very easy. So let's say your take home pay is $100,000 a year, okay? So your goal is a million dollars right here. Not an insane amount of money. Think about that. You could be done working if you get a million bucks. So let's say you make $100,000 a year and you lose about what? 
60% of it in living expenses. So you're down 60,000. So you're going to have, what, 40,000 to play with every year to invest. Now, basically, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take this money and invest it into an account that's also earning that 8%. So every single $40,000 you put in is going to make you 3200 every single year. But the thing is, is every single year this amount's going to like basically earn you money as well. So that's what's called like a future value calculator. So hold on. Give me a second. I got to pull up something else. This is what you need to do for this. All right, so here we go. Here's a future value calculator. <laughs> so let's say you do this for 15 years of your life. You're starting out with $40,000 in there. Your interest rate is 8% because that's the average market return. And your periodic deposit is 40,000, okay? So let's see. So if you do that for 15 years, you got $1.3 million. You're done. And that's if you save $40,000 a year. If you can up that number or earn a higher interest rate, let's say you can make 10% on your money because you have it in something like real estate that earns you more money. You're up to 1.6 basically. And let's say you're able to bump it up to 50,000. Now you're up to 2 million. And what's 8% of 2 million dollars? $160,000 a year. Can everybody live off of 160,000 a year? Probably. And let's say you live off of 160,000 or not 160,000. Let's say you live off of 60,000 of that 160,000. So you have one Actually, let's just go from 0, okay? Let's see what happens if you're able to put in 100,000 for like 10 years. Okay? So if you're able to put in 100,000, and this is once you're already earning your money, and let's bump it down to 8%. For the next 10 years, this is just off of the money you're bringing in from what you've already invested. You're not doing anything different. The hell? Starting amount? Oh, shit. I didn't put a zero. Whatever. Stupid fucking website. So, in 10 years, your $100,000 a year you invest will be up to $1.5 million. But let's say you take this money and put it into more risky investments that earn you a 13% interest rate, which on corporate debt you could very easily do right now. You'd be up to another $2 million on top of your $2 million, which has also grown for the period of these 10 years as well. So you're probably looking at a grand total of around $5 million in a little under 25 years. So, there you go. It's very easy. You just have to, like, be consistent. You have to start, and you have to find a way to get your income up. And whether that's finding new jobs, picking up a new skill so you can go into a different career path, or doing, like, a second job, finding a side hustle, whatever it is. Like, making your money work for you is exactly how, like, you can become financially free, quote-unquote, you know? But yeah, this is all you gotta do, guys. It's not... There's not like a rocket science or, you know, a super complex path ahead of you. It's just having the discipline to save money and put it aside. I mean, even if you do this on a smaller scale, like let's say you have a starting amount of zero, you just stick it into the stock market and you're only putting in 10000 a year. 
So that would be what, 100,000 total invested? You'd walk away with 160,000. So you would have made $60,000 just from your money fucking sitting there. And then that $60,000 that you made is going to earn 8% forever. Same with this 100,000. So then let's bump it out. So here, let me copy this number. Copy. So this is your starting amount. And let's say you don't put any more money in. Okay. So you're not putting in any more money past this. You just let it sit here. What happens in another 10 years? It doubles. Then let's go another 10 years. It over doubles. And then let's hit it one more time. This is just 10,000 a year, guys, for 10 years, keep in mind. If you do more, you're going to get even better results. 1.5 million. So $100,000 saved over the span of 10 years will eventually grow to 1.5 or 1.6 million. So that's pretty fucking good, man. In 25 years, 1 to 2 million will be worthless? Well, dude, you have to adjust for inflation, which the stock market is a hedge against inflation because the market grows at the rate of inflation, typically. But yeah, I mean, pretty much, this is about as basic as it gets because over the course of the entire U.S. stock market, the average annual return has been 7 to 8%. So this is playing it very fucking safe. If you start getting into real estate and other asset classes, you might even do better. But, yeah. Just kind of something to keep in mind, man. Something to keep in mind. But yeah, that's pretty much my plan, man. I just need to get to a certain amount of working capital in order to eventually get to the point where I can basically just live off of my money, earning money. What if you have a family of five, are the only one working and living paycheck to paycheck at 50k a year? Am I screwed? Get a... So what you need to do, I don't know what type of job you have. But literally, even if you like hate the job you have currently and hate what you do, just go apply at a rivaling company that does similar work and see if you can make more money doing the exact same thing you're doing right now. On average, when people switch jobs every two years, they make an additional 20% on top of what they're earning right now. But what I would do is in your free time, pick up a skill, get some IT certifications, learn a coding language, do something like get some analytics certifications and go apply for jobs in those fields that are going to pay you like medium to high, like hundred thousand, like a hundred thousand plus is standard for like it and like analysis experts, you know, coders. That's like minimum pay. So you're not screwed. You just need to, you know, reevaluate there's always options to make more money so it's never too late to start the most important thing is you're like working towards something and you don't get uh stuck in like a vicious cycle So, like, just think about that, guys. If you can save $10,000 a year, you're basically set. 
By the time you turn 60, you will be a multi-millionaire most likely. And the more you save on top of that, the more money you're even going to make. Uh, Jason Boulderama with the five should get that Harvestella to satisfy your farming. Yeah, I have that on the Switch, man. It's pretty good. But it's not really a farming game. Like, they have the farming aspects, but it's more of like kind of a Final Fantasy light type game. Or I guess like a uh, casual RPG. And Timothy Morco with the seven. I have about 10K USD saved up and back up child support in Ecuador. Basically because we lost the debit card linked to the account. I'll try to grow it. Nice, man. Just have to eat ramen noodles for a decade to save up? Bruh. If you have to eat ramen noodles to save up $10,000 in the span of a year, you got bigger problems. You need to do a serious life evaluation. King Samuel with the five, I'm joining the Air Force. And my plan is to get a tech job while I'm active duty. After that, it's either returning to college or get an IT job. Yeah, what you'll probably be able to do is if you work like in some sort of like technology field in the military, you'll be able to transfer into like a uh, contractor role at a big uh, government consulting company and basically do the exact same job for four times the pay. So yeah, that's a pretty solid uh, game plan. Gaming. I'm 25 and working at Pizza Hut, I feel like shit. Well, dude, in your free time, invest your time in learning a new skill. Like, sign up for some IT certification courses or something. Like, go to your local community college and see what courses they offer in the form of, like, computer science or IT or anything. Like, go see if there's, like, some classes that will help you, like, certify. Because a lot of community colleges offer resources like that where you can go and take specific classes that help you learn the material in order to pass certain certification exams in those fields. So, take, like, a step forward and, like, I guess develop some new skills while you're working your current job so then you can eventually pivot out. The whole goal that you want to do in order to make more money is pick up a skill set that's desirable to companies. Knowledge and skills that they can market to their clients are what they're going to pay you for. Griffin, when confronted with the fact that an overwhelming amount of Americans live in first world poverty and don't have a hundred free bucks to get a certification, then they need to stop spending money on dumb shit. You know what? If it comes down to that, sell all your fucking video game consoles, sell your fucking cell phone and go buy a shitty prepaid one. You know, there's things you can do if you are in that desperate of, like, financial stress. I guarantee you, in the United States, if you are working a full-time job, there is no fucking excuse for why you cannot afford to take a fucking certification exam. You're probably just wasting your money on dumb shit. Pablo Herb with the five, I hope this could work in Australia. I got a good gig in mining here, but 
it isn't the most stable job and it's best to try and invest in things. Well, yeah, dude, if you live in Australia, you can still stick money in the S&P 500. It's not hard, so. You could still technically do that same strategy. Where do you look to get into a certification? So whatever it is you're interested in doing, just look up like IT certifications, cybersecurity certifications, uh, SQL certifications, Python certification, Google Analytics certifications. Like just look up whatever you're interested in doing and then there will be like a list of all the different certifications available, what they cover and what you need to like learn in order to pass them. And then you can cross that over, like go to like your local community college's website and see if they offer like a program that would help you learn that sort of material that you can take those classes in and then you can take your certification exam. So you just have to do a little bit of research. Luckily with like most of these technology related jobs, all the information is online and you can teach yourself most of it. But if you want like the structure and help of having like an actual class you can go to, then, you know, a lot of colleges offer that. So let's see, NSA with the 10. Silence the first person to say anything after the stone. Oh, let me check. It was FBI. Yeah, it's pretty alarming though, man. Like I think it's as high as 70% of Americans earning over $100,000 a year live paycheck to paycheck. Like that's literally self-imposed uh, fucking poverty essentially. Because they just blow all their money. It's like called lifestyle creep. The more money you make, the more you start spending on unnecessary purchases. So instead of just maintaining your current lifestyle when you make more money, people tend to like, you know, overindulge and start blowing all their money on a bunch of like lifestyle purchases. Like that's a pretty wild statistic to think about though. Like 70% of people making over a hundred thousand a year are living paycheck to paycheck. Because most people would consider making $100,000 a year to be, like, extremely successful. NSA with the 10, silence the person... Wait, the second person to say anything after the stone now. Oh, shit. Nick Batista. I can't click on his name. There we go. Can't that be avoided? Um, yeah, it can, but the problem is is most people don't have self-control or are financially illiterate. King Samuel with the two, I make 20k a year and yet I can still save some. Well, do you live at home? Because the other thing is, is like a big, you know, eater of income is rent. So unless you live alone, then I don't know. Because 20k seems like it would be hard to live on and still pay rent.
At trade school jobs also... Wait, are trade school jobs also a good thing? Yeah. Definitely. There is a massive shortage of plumbers, electricians, HVAC repair, mechanics, you name it. Any job that requires any sort of manual labor. Ascendant Seal with the two, play Real Music Stroke by Liquid. Third world country, maybe here you could technically live from 4K a year. Average being, well, yeah. That's a little different. We're not talking about the US primarily. I'm surprised low tier god hasn't done music honestly I stick my dick up in your mouth Yeah 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 In this game you know the rules Swimming mark coming like a pool Why because he's black? No, cuz he has a really good voice. He's got that nice like deep voice and smooth voice. He would be really good at like slow rap or some shit like that. He has a very unique voice, bro. He's got a very, like, smooth and deep voice. He'd be very good at, like, uh, kind of, like, chill rap, I feel like. With, like, a little bit of auto-tune. Kind of like that. But maybe a little bit more low-key. But, yeah. Like, I'm just kind of shocked he hasn't made a song, man. Because, like, most YouTubers make a fucking song at some point, and it just seems like he would be the type. Because, you know, he loves to, like, fucking flex and all that type of shit. You know what I mean? I could make some fire music. I doubt it. I fucking doubt it. I have zero musical talent. I wasn't even a band kid. Dude, that didn't even drop seeds? What the fuck? Damn. That's some homosexual behavior, bruh.
Griffin would rap about. Oh my god. Y'all are more excited about my Pokemon cards than me these days. Real talk. No, Fallout 76 got a lot better over time, man. It's actually pretty solid from what I've heard now. I haven't played it recently, but it seems like it has like a decent fan base. Like, they went back and fixed a lot of the main issues people had. King Samuel the two, I have a smooth voice as well. RTU diss track soon. Go for it, man. And the Grizz with the 10, I'll be playing the 16 times the detail on the 1000 planets and I will be installing the Genshin Impact Busty Anime Wii Mon Mod and by day 21 I will be a powerful Sith Lord. I mean, probably all of that is not uh, entirely impossible, man. The mods are going to go fucking crazy for fucking uh, Starfield. I already heard there's apparently a group of modders that are getting together to port Skyrim into one of the planets in Starfield's like galaxy. So they're going to make like a planet Skyrim. Or it's like basically the entire planet is the game Skyrim. <laughs> like, I don't know how long that's going to take to complete, but that's pretty neat. They're going to make planet Skyrim. So apparently there's a couple like big modding communities that are getting together to work on that. Yeah, Planet Skyrim, man. You generation with the five, listen to. Oh god. I just saw the thing that briefly. What the fuck is this? Oh god. Damn, bro. Damn, bro. This beat really gets down. <laughs> bro. Yeah, you generation literally sent down syndrome rap. This reminds me of that fucking uh, Mario Brothers rap guy. Can't remember his fucking name.
No fucking seeds, really. You killed Uncle Hank! Bruh. Young Thug type song? I don't know, I think the rap lyrics were a little bit too understandable to be the Young Thug, bro. You could kind of understand what they were saying. If that was Young Thug, you wouldn't be able to. Dude, I'm fucking pissed. It didn't let me get seeds off of two of those. Open the door! <laughs> Spread them seeds? I'm trying to, man. Am I creating a biome within a biome? Not technically, I'm just building more grassland to plant more trees so I have more wood. Yeah, I'll be playing Starfield tomorrow. I've got to bring my uh, Xbox in here though. But yeah, that's the plan. Uh, 2023 Perfect Dark of the Ten, Skyrim Planet will take a long time. Oh, definitely. That's a pretty ambitious project. Uh, probably until Elder Scrolls Six is close and the voice actors will be changed. Some voice actors are now starting to complain about their voices being cloned for more dialogue mods in Fallout 4. Well, the Planet Skyrim thing will literally just be a direct port of Skyrim, so I don't know if they would need to change the voice actors if they're just literally porting the existing game. But, I don't know. I don't think they're making any new content. They're just going to try and literally drop Skyrim on a uh, planet. So, like, when you land on it, you start playing Skyrim, essentially. Dude, I have zero faith that Sky... Or not Skyrim, fuck. Starfield is going to work well with OBS running, so I'm playing this shit on console. If I was not streaming the game, I would play it on my PC, but since I'm going to be running both OBS and a new Bethesda game, <laughs> I don't want to have both tasks running at the same time because I feel like one of them is going to fuck up the other. 
Like, Bethesda games are notoriously bad for just being fucking horrible at launch. So I do not trust that game to run well on PC while, like, simultaneously streaming it. So if I wasn't streaming it, then yeah, I'd play it on PC. But if I'm going to stream it, I'm just going to play it on console. And that way the console's dedicated to just playing the game, and then my PC is just dedicated to streaming. It's not even that OBS is a piece of shit, it's that both programs are extremely CPU intensive, most likely. So, it's gonna cause issues, is my guess. But, we'll see. Bethesda games are just notoriously bad at launch, so I want to, like, minimize the errors that I'm going to run into. So, if I'm gonna stream it, I just wanna be able to plug in my fucking Xbox and stream it and not have to worry about it. It's just easier. I've just seen too many games have issues with OBS, because like anytime I run a game at higher than 60 FPS anyway, OBS freaks the fuck out and doesn't properly import the fucking capture to the software, and it makes it like look super jittery on y'all's end. So I just, I have a feeling there's going to be some sort of clash with OBS in the game, and I just want to like minimize that. Because I'd rather just maximize the time I'm playing the game versus trying to fix fucking issues. Well, I'm Key, you thought correct, Nick Fuentes is gay. No, the Starfield review embargo lifts at noon Eastern tomorrow. So, 12 hours from now. So, basically, reviews are lifted eight hours before launch, which is not a great sign, in my opinion, but we'll have to see. Am I going to do a review? I'm going to be honest, man. The likelihood of me finishing Starfield as things sit right now is very low. <laughs> I'm just going to be completely honest. I do not know if I will ever finish that game. If I really like it, then maybe, but I don't know. I'll probably play it for a couple streams, see how it goes. If people really like it, then I'll continue it, but most likely I'm not going to finish it. I just don't really enjoy those type of games anymore. Like, if it's an Elder Scrolls or, like, fantasy setting game, then I can do it, but sci-fi is not really my thing. 
personally. Uh, Griff, would you let a girl queef in your face? Well, it's not really that you let her queef in your face. It's that she might do it, but yeah, I wouldn't really care. It's just air, bro. Like, it's not like a fucking fart where it's literally shit flakes getting blasted out of your ass. Like, it's just air that gets trapped in the uh, snatch. It's not really something that you're like, oh my god, I really have to queef. <laughs> like, no, it's just, it kind of happens on its own. <laughs> So let me put it this way, if I was already like going down on her or whatever, or she was sitting on my face, then yeah, at that point I really would not care if she queefed in my face, obviously, because, bruh, you already got that shit on your face, like who cares? <laughs> What if she's a squirter? You mean waterworks? Uh, it's not preferred, but I mean, I don't know. If I did, if I actually like liked her, then I guess I wouldn't care. But if it's like some nasty hoe or some shit, I'd be pissed. Because she literally would have pissed all over you. There's no such thing as a squirt. It's just pee. Squirt juice is piss. Hey guys, y'all want to hear a uh, mean joke about the Irish? What do potatoes and Irishmen have in common? No, no, no. They both belong in the dirt. It's okay to say, uh, ethnic jokes about white people, so... That's the only reason I'm allowed to make that joke. I can't afford this shit. 
It's not racism if they're white guys, remember that. Uh, I saw there with the five is that one dude that called the cops still in jail. Yeah, so basically he's on like protective hold under mental health evaluation and yeah, he's been locked up for like a week under like psyche eval. And apparently he's not cooperating, so that's the reason he's still being held. Bro, white is a color, I just did. Almost done. Griffin was Frodo a virgin? I believe so. Unless him and Sam, you know, butt fucked, but then that gets into the debate of whether or not gay sex allows you to lose your virginity or not. Since technically you still got no pussy. If you're gay, you can't lose your virginity unless you've had sex with a girl. You know, like maybe you tried to have sex with a girl and it just wasn't, you know, tickling your pickle, so to say. So then you try like gay sex and then you're like, damn, this is great. Then yeah, technically you would no longer be a virgin. But if you've only ever had gay sex, I don't know if that would classify you as a virgin or not. It's like if you have anal sex, it doesn't count as uh, losing your virginity for a girl. So... I don't know, man. It's a uh, interesting question that I don't know the answer to. That's for fucking sure. I am no expert. Is bussy a swear word? Yes, dude, it's very offensive. Is oral sex real sex? Eh, not really. The only consequence of oral sex is you might get herpes, but there's no risk of pregnancy, so I'd say no. What would I do if my kid was gay? Take it away, Wings. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. But look here, <laughs> there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. So I'm key, what you're saying is... If I touch myself, but even though there's no one else involved, I'm still having sex as long as I finish? Like, the fuck? I don't know if that's the uh, way it works, bud. So I can have sex with myself just by... Nah, I don't really think that's how it works. That sounds like some copium, bro.
Yeah, man, I've had sex 50 times a day as well. What the fuck? build bricks now guys hooray anal virginity doesn't exist especially if you're shitting out logs 24 7 what's the difference at that point it gets stretched to the same diameter Why build bricks when you can flip them, bro? Real talk. I sell it with a five. Can't wait to see the One Piece live action movie just to see how bad it is. Yeah, that shit's going to be atrocious, man. It's being made by Netflix, right? And we saw how well the Death Note movie turned out, so... It's going to be great. I have never had gas station sushi. Thank you very much. I wish Minecraft had, like, actual fucking fruit trees, man. I feel like that'd be cool. But they don't. Kind of lame. Classified XXX with a 5W for choosing Lord of the Rings OST. By the way, got all three endings in Armor Core 6, and it's a pretty fun game. You thinking of playing it? Um, I'm not really the biggest Armored Core fan, so if I were to play it, I'd probably pick it up on a pretty big sale. 
But I'm not like completely opposed to playing it. I just wouldn't pay full price for it just because I did not care for Armored Core 5. But if it was on sale, I'd probably check it out. Depending on the price. I've gotten really selective with what games I actually purchase nowadays. Because I just used to spend like so much money on games I never even touched. And then when I finally got around to playing them, they were like $5 or something ridiculous. It's like, bro, I could have just waited. I didn't even play this game anyway. Uh, we can watch Synthetic Man's video on it. If you guys are interested. I'm not opposed. Griffin with his unnecessary spending. Dude, I'm trying to be more frugal, guys. Dude, to be fair, like, for the past, what... Five months, I've put in like an extra $3,000 into my mortgage payment each month. So that's what I'm trying to spend money on right now is to get my fucking mortgage payment paid off as quickly as possible. So then I can start net cash flowing on the fucking uh, property versus, you know, dumping a shit ton of money into interest payments. And Retro with the 2, thoughts on PS Plus price hike in Starfield? Dude, the PS Plus price hike is fucking stupid. I think PlayStation Plus and Xbox Gold are like the dumbest fucking things ever. Like, the fact that you have to like pay to play online for a game that you already fucking paid for is stupid. Like, the online portion of a video game is not paid for, maintained, or operated by Microsoft, Sony, or Nintendo. The game developers pay for the fucking servers, they pay for the online infrastructure, all of that. Microsoft literally just gives you basic shit like party chat and a friends list, essentially. Which, if they want to paywall that type of shit, fine, but you should still be able to access the online servers that the developers of the game you paid for are paying for themselves. There is no fucking reason they needed to raise that price other than they saw a way to make a 33%, uh, you know, revenue increase on subscriptions because they knew people would pay it. Yeah, I mean, it's literally just a license to print money, man. Like, paid online is just literally billions of dollars of revenue that Microsoft and Sony can pull out of fucking thin air and essentially make for doing literally nothing. So, of course, they're always going to fucking charge for it, but it fucking blows either way. It fucking sucks regardless, man.
no reviews come out at noon Eastern. So about 11 hours from now. You won't see Starfield reviews until noon Eastern time. Dude, what's wild is, is all of Xbox Live's quote-unquote features that you have to pay for are 100% free on the Xbox PC app. Like, you literally have the entire online infrastructure of Xbox Live 100% free on your fucking PC. It's just, there's no fucking excuse for paid online anymore. It is the biggest fucking cash grab in the entire industry. Like, people want to bitch about microtransactions and shit. I think if you bitched about, like, you know, paid online, you'd have a much better case. Yep. There's too much money in it, bro. It's literally a free, like, multi-billion dollar paycheck every single year for Xbox and PlayStation, so they're not going to get rid of it. I mean, would you throw away money? Nope. Nah, MMOs had the paid online business model before Xbox ever did, so MMOs were charging monthly subscription fees before Xbox did that. They borrowed that business model. Damn, bro, this soundtrack is really fucking good. It's so atmospheric. I sell her with the five. We've been conditioned online pay since 360, way longer than microtransactions, so no one cares. But paying for cloud storage, PSN is straight boot. I agree, man. The cloud saves being locked. Well, Nintendo does the same shit, too. The cloud saves being locked behind a paywall is fucking disgusting, especially considering that Microsoft and Sony take a 30% cut of all fucking games sold on their platform so they could easily use that money to pay for fucking cloud save and like infrastructure it's not that expensive especially fucking microsoft which they don't charge for it luckily you get that free just if you have an xbox but if they did that shit would be even more ironic Nintendo doesn't even offer cloud saves on all of their games either because they don't want you duplicating Pokemon. It's like, bro, what the fuck type of retarded shit is that? They want you to pay for the fucking Pokemon Bank subscription, which is a different fucking subscription service you have to pay for to do cloud storage for your fucking Pokemon. Like, just specifically for Pokemon, you have to pay for a separate service to store your Pokemon on the fucking cloud. 
It's like, bro, what the fuck? Yeah, Steam is the only platform you can actually point to and be like, yes, this platform is actually pro-consumer. I'm sorry, like, every other platform is just dicking you raw dog at every opportunity. I think Steam is like the only objectively pro-consumer platform. Because, like, all expense is put on the publisher and developers of video games. You don't pay Steam for anything. They use the money they make from selling other people's games to basically provide you the infrastructure. You don't have to pay for any of that shit. All of it's free. I need these fossil fuels, guys. Dude, I'm surprised environmental activists haven't come after Minecraft yet for teaching kids to burn fossil fuels. When do you think that'll occur? Do you think there'll be some outrage about Minecraft encouraging kids to burn fossil fuels? I think it's only a matter of time. Like, where's the green energy alternatives? Me thinks they should add palm trees. I'm actually surprised they haven't. That seems like such a no-brainer thing to have in a desert biome, you're right. Glass slabs, palm trees, fruit trees. What else? Solar panels, wind turbines. But nah, um, I don't know, man. I'm surprised they don't have camels. That's another thing. Like, camels would be kind of cool. Another riding animal? That shit would be neat. And you could load them up like a caravan and, like, you know, chain a bunch of camels together with fucking, uh, 
leads and have like a camel caravan. That shit would be cool. They do have camels? Bro, where the fuck they at? I'm in a desert biome. I would thought like if I'm if they've added camels, you would think I would have seen one by now. Yo, let me see if it's that I need to update my Minecraft application because sometimes that is the case. Let's see. Sometimes I don't get the updates. Yeah, the only thing I have is the Xbox and phone link, so yeah, no. No Minecraft update. I like this terraforming, though. Looks nice, having a little grass here. I just wish animals would spawn, but I don't know if it's, like, technically not a desert biome. I think it's still considered desert. Gives a little color to the desert. You can chain together a llama caravan? Hmm. I guess that's the same thing. I really should put my bed lower to the ground. <laughs> it doesn't really need to be at the top of this tower. Yeah, I like the greenery around the river. I think it looks nice. Tony Esquire with the five. Sony's bullshit is going to lose me as a customer with all that whining about the Microsoft ABK deal. These greedy clowns are out here raising PS price. Exactly. We're worried that Microsoft is going to price everyone out of the industry. Meanwhile, Sony raises the price on literally everything. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's pretty ironic. Griffin needs to play Goodbye Volcano High, his favorite for hell no, dude. I ain't playing that shit. Not a chance. How's the rental property coming? It's good, actually. It made 7,000 bucks last month, so. So after, um, well, I shouldn't even say like profit because all the money that it makes goes right back into repaying the mortgage early. So 
but basically the monthly mortgage payments 4500 it made like 6800 something and then minus utilities about 6000 total so it paid down about 1500 on top of the existing mortgage payment and then i still stuck in 2700 on top of that So any money the property makes goes right into repaying the mortgage as soon as possible to minimize the amount of interest you have to pay over the term of the loan. Uh, yeah, so theoretically in the future, like, if we start taking money out of like the monthly income as like profit instead of repaying the mortgage, yeah, I would split the money with my dad. So we would both have taken 3,500. But because we're still paying it down, it's better to just put as much money into the property as you can up front because then you pay less in uh, interest over the term of the loan. Yep, this is Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's kind of interesting though. Like I looked at the uh, paper the bank gave us on like the repayment schedule. And basically, if we make the minimum mortgage payment every single month, which is 4500 after five years, the loan would only be paid off 30000 off of the principal. So we would still owe like 505000 on the property. But if you put in an extra $2,000 a month on that mortgage, then you can pay it off in nine years instead of 30. Like, that shows you how much money you blow on interest. So just by putting in an extra $2,000 a month on top of your existing mortgage payment, you can, like, pay off the property in less than one-third of the time. So I looked at it, and the total repayment would be $1.3 if I just did the normal mortgage payments. But if we do the extra $2,000 a month... It brings that total amount paid down to 700,000. So you save 600K by putting in those extra $2,000 a month. Like, it's insane how much the bank rapes you with fucking interest payments on mortgages. So, yeah, I, I try to put in like two to $3,000 extra every single month just to get it paid off as soon as possible. But, yeah. So that's where the majority of kind of like my um, excess income goes right now. I just throw it straight into mortgage payments. I haven't really been buying anything like frivolous or anything like that. Ordering food, you know, buying a shit ton of cards or anything like that. I've just mainly been repaying the mortgage as quickly as possible to try and get that shit squared away. But, yeah.
Oh shit. So you're going to be doing YouTube for the next nine years? Uh, no. <laughs> Probably not, man. Why would I be doing YouTube for the next nine years? I would be 34 years old. Let's just call it 35 at that point. I hope not. <laughs> Hopefully by age 35, bro. I'm like married, have a family, a big ass house, and I'm only working because I want to. Chad is my family. That's right, man. Who needs kids, a wife, any of that shit when you have uh, strangers on the internet? Jesus Christ, Griff? What? What's wrong? Am I that thirsty for Brit? Huh? Why the fuck y'all keep bringing up Brit? Talk to her and not me. Tell us why you think blacks are bad, Griff. Huh? What the fuck does that mean? Don't jump. I want to jump, bro. Life isn't worth living. I'm all alone. Only this big-nosed merchant class is here to uh, keep me company. Tube coral. Ooh. Lube the tubes.
Guys, I'm literally like the most unracist person on the internet. Like, real talk. Like, I don't know how many times I've admitted that the BBC is superior to the small white penis at every opportunity, guys. Like, come on. I'm, like, literally the least racist guy you can think of. Dude, if I did a fucking server on Minecraft, everybody would just grief. I've done that shit before. I used to have a Discord Minecraft realm, and it was a fucking nightmare. There, now I don't have to walk up all those fucking stairs every time. My world is too beautiful to grief? Yeah, bullshit. If there's a will, there's a way, man. Motherfuckers will always grief on Minecraft, given the opportunity. The griefers know no limitations. When is Space Marine 2 supposed to come out? Is there like an actual release date on that yet? I really want that to come out. September? Thank you, you generation, for proving my point. This is a wholesome community. <laughs> That's funny. We got a bunch of dirty ass griefers, bro. Dude, I really want Space Marine 2 to come out, though. That's, like, my most anticipated game this year now. Dude, the only way I would let people into my world is if the only thing they could do is farm. And then I could just use, like, people as, like, a slave labor force to, like, cultivate the fields and, you know, trade with the villagers in order to, uh, multiply my wealth. That would be about it. And then I would build an emerald palace. Griffin builds a kingdom in Minecraft. I mean, bro, pretty much. I mean, look at this thing. 
you could house hundreds of potential players in this village or town or whatever the fuck you want to call it. I even have a colony over there in another city out in the distance that direction, so... Well, if it was like Babylon, I would make a lapis gate. I mean, I have plenty of room for hundreds of people to be housed. Maybe I could get some coal miners, too. Since I always need coal for more torches. Nah, I'm key. Jim was always fun. We just played like dodgeball or four square or like some shit like that. My gym class was a joke. Like there was a wait list in my high school to get into like uh, the basically gym class pretty much. I forget what it was called. It had like some weird name. It was like advanced sports or some bullshit like that. It was literally just playing dodgeball and four square and like basketball. That was a. Well, there was no native villagers on that land, but the native villagers do live in this in this uh, little encampment. All I did was provide them safety, man. So if anything, I made the villagers life better. I enclosed them in this castle-like wall for their safety, because this will be the breeding grounds from which I, uh, you know, import people to my other city, because the other city had no village existing there. But yeah, this village is alive and well and populated. Yeah, maybe I could build like a little, uh, I need to build like a tall tower or something that comes out of this so it's more identifiable when I start exploring. But yeah, maybe I should build like this and then I can get somebody in here to be like the governor of this little fucking village and is in charge of like breeding the villagers. But yeah, I just built this wall around it. No, Britt, you're a woman. Learn your place. We do need someone to cook the bread, so there you go. Do I prefer hairy or shaved? Um, I would say shaved, but as long as it's like neatly trimmed, then I don't really care. It's not like a must be one way or the other, but I would say shaved if I had to pick between the two. As long as it's like groomed and kept, then I think it's fine. But if it's like a fucking, you know, tumbleweed or some shit, then yeah, no. Nah.
I can understand why people don't want to shave, because, like, some people get, like, really irritated and shit. Like, you know, you get ingrown hairs and everything, so... If you don't want to shave for that reason, but you keep it, like, trimmed up, like, that's fine. I don't know, I'm, I'm not really that picky on that type of shit. We're talking about bushes, bro. Nick Fuentes is starting to sound like Griffin. Wait, what? Hell nah. What, is he like giving up his pursuit of cat boys in pursuit of what? How does he sound like me? Yeah, dude, I saw that picture of Kanye getting fucking sucked off on a boat. That shit was funny as fuck. See, I saw it with the five. I assume Stellar Blade is canceled or delayed since it's Korean studios tends to happen. It's probably delayed, yeah. That would be my guess. And Juan with the five, the song makes me want to duel you to the death. Griffin Winter gets to marry Brett Cooper. Uh, you can have her, bro. She's all yours. You can have her, my guy. He recently said, I hate poor people and I hate poverty and I'm sick of lying about it. We can no longer worship mediocrity or poverty. We want it to be extraordinary, not ordinary. I mean, that sounds pretty based, honestly. That might be the most based thing Nick Fuentes has said probably ever. Yeah, rare Nick W. I will never understand why people are like satisfied with being mediocre that shit has never made sense to me brad cooper did a video on foozy oh my god bro Yeah, Microsoft already leaked that they expect uh, Elder Scrolls 6 to come out at the earliest in 2026. So, we got a while, guys. Griffin, literally 99.9999999% of the world's population is mediocre. Well, I will not be one of them. I refuse to be mediocre.
I silo with a five, and that way I'm very con wait content gaming, working, and getting booty. I live and travel light. Nice, man. I mean, I wouldn't really say you're mediocre, bro. You make a lot of money compared to the average guy. Like, the average working man makes 30-something thousand a year, so... <laughs> anybody that, like, at least in the U.S., but anybody making more than that is above average. Just by default. Right there. If you make more than $32,000 a year, and you're like 20s, you are above mediocre. You are above average. You all don't realize how low average is. That's what I mean. People aspiring to be worthless are just pathetic. Like, if your end goal in life is just to be content making 30-something thousand a year, then yeah. You need to get your shit together. Yeah, you can look it up. Let's see. Average working male... Salary. So as of August 23, the average wait average hourly pay for a male in the United States is 17.94 an hour. Which, if we look that up, hold on, calculator. So 17.94 times 52 times 40. That is $37,315 a year pre-tax. There you go. That is the average income in the United States for a working-aged male. 37000 So if you're making more than that, you're above mediocre. Congratulations. You beat the odds. Thirty-eight thousand, pretty much, is the average working male salary in the U.S. I mean, let me put this into perspective, guys. With my college degree, I was pretty much making just about four times that amount right out of college. So it really shows you the power of like setting yourself up with a solid degree to get a good job, which dramatically helps you in life. Like that's how important it is to get like a good skill set. Like I'm making four times as much pretty much right out of school versus the average man just because I got a good degree. So it shows you the advantage you can give yourself if you do things properly. And think about it too, I don't even have to go work on like some construction site or anything. I just roll out of bed, sign in on my laptop, and I start working and getting paid. So I don't even have to like do anything inherently difficult. It's just I have like a particular skill set that companies look for, therefore I'm qualified to like go and do certain jobs. There's nothing inherently special about what I did to get there. It's just I set myself up with the right set of circumstances in order to be able to have those opportunities available. Anybody can do it, man. There's nothing special about what I did. Yeah, bro, I'm a scientist. I'm a data scientist, guys. Mm. 
But yeah, anybody can do it, man. It's not hard. You just gotta take the initiative, set yourself up, and be smart about it. So just think about into that, like, the perspective of life. If you're already making more than 38000 a year, you're already well ahead of the average man in the country. So you're already in the top 50%. At least. So, you know. Have a little self-esteem. Yeah, I need to transition to, like, the finance field or something pretty soon, man. I need to work with money. Like, I just enjoy, like, the movement of money and everything like that. So I need to get into, like, that type of, uh, position soon. Yeah, like, basically, um, I'm what's called a... Shit. Fuck, what is my actual title? I'm a senior analyst at my company, but um, there's like a specific, I'm a management consultant is the term, I think. I think that's like my official job title. I don't fucking know. I think that's right, but I'm not 100% sure, so I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it, dude. Griffin has a dollar bill with his face on hell no. I have zero pictures of myself. If I want to look at myself, I'll look at the mirror. I'm not really one to like have a bunch of pictures of anything. The only thing I have hanging on my wall is a mirror in my living room and then an American flag in my office and then my two like card frames I have up. That's it. I don't hang shit up on my walls typically. I don't have any, like, art or posters or any of that stuff. You have a poster of Brett? Hell yeah, man. To each their own.
Let's see. Tony Esquire with the five. I watched the 4K extended edition of Fellowship of the Ring today and fell asleep three times. The movie is dope. Just long as hell. Yeah, dude, it's hard not to fall asleep during a movie for me nowadays. If that's all I'm doing, I'm out. Do you know what shit's really cringe, though? People who choose to watch movies on their phone or laptop instead of just going and, like, turning it on on the actual TV. That shit I have never understood, bro. Like, choosing to watch a movie on a laptop instead of a TV. Like, why the fuck would you not just use your TV? Oh yeah, people do that, man. Well, if you don't have a TV, that's a little bit different. But if you have like a TV sitting there and you don't use it to watch movies, it's kind of sus. Pablo Herb of the Five, I love the Fallout games, so Starfield looks great, but despite that, I'm so glad it's finished now, as that means Elder Scrolls Six will now be an actual production. I know, man. Fingers fucking crossed. Elder Scrolls Six cannot come soon enough. It's been way too long. Damn, bro, it looks so peaceful down there. God, almost like a small forest. Yeah, I'm basically just putting in grass where it will grow, so that way I can plant trees along the fucking rivers. So I'll have a supply of wood, and I won't have to go all the way out there to get some. That way I'll have, like, a continuous source of wood along the river, and that way I won't have to leave my city in order to get what I need. You always need wood, bro. Good wood is never not need. <laughs> well, I'm key. If I chop my morning wood, it won't grow back. Wood good? That's right. I don't see anyone made of wood aside from your tools. Well, Brit, I don't make people out of wood, but you need it for like doors. I mean, you can use it to make sticks, crafting tables. I'm gonna need it for composters. I wanna build a dock. 
So that I think is my next like big mega build. So over here, like the way this world is laid out is really cool. So you have like this nice little, I guess, tidal pool or whatever the fuck you want to call it. But what I want to do is I want to build like a port right here that comes in from the ocean. And, you know, basically you'd be able to like bring your boat in through here and you would have like buildings all around here that would kind of like look like a port town or whatever the fuck. Because if you go straight this way, it's just like the open ocean. But yeah, you can see right here. Like, basically, that's that pool I was showing you all. And then this is where I would like to build the port. Is like, right here. And then part right there. And then all that way is, like, open ocean. I'm gonna sail the seven seas. Yeah, there's not really anything over there. Just the massive, like, marshland. This is survival, it's not creative. Yeah, I made the map and everything on the wall. I mean, it pretty much is already an artificial island, but it's not artificial. It was already laid out this way. So there was like rivers surrounding all these different like land masses. So I just built around them and then carved canals and everything through the land. You can see right here. Then there's one that goes back that way and then one that goes across right there. Dude, I don't give a fuck about killing mobs. Like, there's nothing satisfying to me about killing a bunch of fucking creepers and skeletons. I just want to build. So, this is a legit survival world, and I can still earn achievements and everything. Everything has to be hand mined and placed. Yeah, I'll build a wall eventually, but I have to keep flattening. So see this river right here? The wall will go all the way around that river. But I'm going to keep flattening, and then once it's perfectly flat, then I'll build the wall and box everything in. Because by that point, I'll have so much sandstone, I won't ever have to fucking do any sort of, like, terraforming again. 
Oh, the villagers will pay for it, dude. Which building reminds you of the Garden of Babylon? This one? That's called a ziggurat. But yeah, the interior of this building is big enough to put an entire fucking city inside of. Which maybe I'll do. I'll build like a little village in here. But yeah, this is a big enough building to put like an entire village in if I wanted to. You could have farms, mines, animals, houses. It's massive. And that's just the first fucking floor. Not to mention, like, the second floor has its own space right here. That you can go in and you have all this room. And then you go to the top. And this is where it gets more decorative. You have just like this tree, which I, I've never finished like topping it off. I probably should. But yeah, and then you have like the map of the world, which is like the focal point. the five have you tried this Lord of the Rings game when pandemic took us to oh conquest yeah I think I did that was on the 360 right pretty sure uh, can we watch this real quick I have to sleep here soon yeah we can watch real quick and I saw that with the two what was the word you said ziggurat I'll put it in the chat The fuck is a ziggurat? Um, it's basically a Sumerian temple. Yeah, I'm racist towards the ancient Mesopotamians, bro. She. Dude, I was just trying to show how we was Kangs and shit, but, you know. Well, yeah, every ancient civilization used to have a dick measuring contest of how large they could build a building. Dude, prime example, look at fucking, uh... Dubai, like, they tried to make the world's tallest building. Now I think, what, Kuwait or some other country is now planning on building the world's tallest building? Like, yeah, it's always been a dick measuring contest throughout human history. <laughs> Everybody's always wanted to have the biggest building. Like, the Empire State Building was the tallest building at one point.
But yeah, I really like this building as like the focal point of the uh, city. I think it looks really nice. I love that style of building, man. It just looks really good. Like, it just kind of completes the whole look. That's like the central area that you go to. It's right up against the water at the heart of the city. But, yeah. I think it's pretty nice. That was the first building I built in this city. So, everything else was planned around it. I flattened the area that it was on first, used the materials to build the building, and then worked my way out, pretty much. Alright, we can watch this real quick. After the successes of Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2, the late great Pandemic Studios had an idea to take Battlefront's core concepts and transition them into a different genre, substituting the space opera setting of Star Wars with medieval fantasy, magic and swords, and bows and arrows. This idea, first announced in 2008, not only came to fruition, but was brought to life within Middle-earth, J.R.R. Tolkien's revered fantasy setting of Lord of the Rings, which itself had found a renewed place among the public consciousness following Peter Jackson's Masterpiece Film Trilogy, which released in the early 2000s. In an interview with IGN, then-pandemic director Eric Gruitz said the team started throwing around these ideas and, in perfect serendipity, happened to get access to the Lord of the Rings license. So we started working on it as kind of a fantasy battlefront that we set in the Lord of the Rings universe. And so the board was set. Lord of the Rings Conquest would be a spiritual successor to Star Wars Battlefront, pairing the series' giant open-ended battles with Tolkien's fame. Dude, I bet this shit's expensive. Expensive now how much let's see how much this game is this game is probably very expensive Lord of the Rings conquest Xbox 360 oh it's not terrible it must not be backwards compatible it's only 15 bucks pre-owned that's not horrible Middle Earth it had been for if you want it sealed it's 125 but yeah years since battlefront 2 hit shelves and the prospect of a bigger and better battlefront that took advantage of bigger and better current gen hardware was likely high among many a gamer's wish list and while conquest wasn't star wars in theory fitting jackson's vision of tolkien's giant fantasy battles into a battlefront like game sounded great the results however weren't so lord of the rings conquest is a deeply flawed game dude i did not know anyone that did not like this game personally everyone i knew loved this game but you know critics know best huh just about every aspect from its clunky combat to its disappointing map design but it's also a really interesting game in some areas conquest awkwardly leans on the lord of the rings license and in other areas does a really nice job utilizing it in a similar vein conquest is a game that at times fails to fully flush out an established formula and at other times expands on that formula in a way that surprisingly demands player communication and awareness conquest's blueprints can be traced back to the early 2000s dude i remember that one game lord of the rings war in the north that one was terrible that game was fucking trash but conquest i think was good in From Battlefield 1942, properly. the first entry of the Battlefield series, popularized massive open-ended battles across spacious maps. Vehicles and role-specific classes emphasized teamwork and a commitment to players fulfilling the role they selected, whether it be a medic or an anti-tank soldier. Battlefield's Conquest game mode took its vehicles and classes and made their usage key to winning objective-based matches. To give your team the best chance at winning, you need to capture bases spread across the map, which meant vehicles weren't just nice to have, but 
often decided the outcome of firefights. Battlefield 1942's structure is still a style in use today and one we're all likely familiar with. Pandemic's original Battlefronts released in 2004 and 2005 didn't only give Battlefield's formula a Star Wars coding, it dropped players into the franchise's famed cinematic battles and matched Battlefield's excellent objective-based map design along with classes that were also important. I'd go so far as to argue some of Battlefront's maps are among the greatest multiplayer maps ever made. They were diverse Yeah, I never bought most... War in the North because I heard it was really bad. Maybe I should get it. Part balanced and kept players from getting too comfortable with a single play style or strategy. On both the single player and multiplayer front, Pandemic built Conquest with pretty much the same exact structure as the Battlefronts were built, recreating the battles of the films and giving players options on how to participate. You select from four classes, each with their own abilities, and spend most of your time playing as a nondescript soldier. There play it on stream? Uh, I'd have to get a 360. There are playable heroes and villains. I don't think it's on Steam, right? I don't think any of the old Lord of the Rings stuff is on Steam. So I think all of it got. Uh, yeah. Lego Lord of the Rings, Elden Ring. Yeah, they don't have any of them on Steam. I think war. I don't think any of the uh, old Lord of the Rings games are back compat though. Which appear in both the single player and multiplayer, while ints, trolls, elephants, and siege equipment stand in for vehicles. Conquest's single player campaign, also like Battlefront, is sort of a pseudo historical documentary that follows the trilogy's battles in chronological order, occasionally inserting a battle or two inspired by Tolkien's books or created by Pandemic themselves. Levels are spliced together with footage from the films, narrated by Hugo Weaving, the only member of the cast to reprise their role. Beating the first campaign, which largely stays true to the movies, unlocks the evil campaign, a man in the high castle scenario wherein the forces of evil triumph over good and storm across Middle Earth, conquering the continent. <laughs> For the most part, single player in the battlefronts worked the same way multiplayer did, and the levels were often just as open-ended. Conquest single player is much more linear and populated by grunts, NPCs that don't appear in the multiplayer and are easy to defeat. Rather than feeling like you're taking part in a larger battle, Conquest single player and really the multiplayer too, come off more like a quasi hack and slash. There are combos, special attacks, and a whole bunch of button mashing. Levels are still objective based, some replicate events from the movies, and Pandemic even throws normal enemies and a few bosses at you. As neat as some of those moments are, it doesn't take long until the objectives feel uninspired and superfluous. There's quite a few instances of hold this area or kill this many bad guys. It all forms a somewhat disappointing and kind of odd stylistic choice. Levels. Dude, the thing I never understood about Lord of the Rings, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But aren't Sauron and Gandalf, like, considered to be on the same fucking level? Like, why the fuck is Sauron so much more powerful than, like, Gandalf? That shit never made sense to me. It's like, they're both, like, technically the same, like, ranking of beings, pretty much. And it's like, why the fuck is Sauron, like, this god-tier fucking character, but, like, Gandalf and Saruman are, like, really fucking weak? That never made sense to me. It's like, why would they need to swear fealty to him when literally they could just, like, gang rape him? Both Sauron and Gandalf and Sauron. Like, all three of them are the same, like, tier, apparently. They're, like, the equivalent of angels in the Lord of the Rings universe. So they're, like, minor gods, essentially. Seldom feel as though you're in a bigger open-ended battle, and the objectives don't take full advantage of Conquest's four classes and their different playstyles. It's confined and simplistic. There are brief flashes, both in the main and evil campaigns, where you get- No, I understand that Sauron's the villain, but the point I'm trying to make is why does Gandalf not have any, like, fire-ass abilities or some shit? Like, really, Gandalf is very fucking weak in terms of, like, powers in the Lord of the Rings movies.
get that excitement of finally taking part in a battle you were only able to watch before. The feeling you got in Battlefront while actually flying a snowspeeder toward a towering AT-AT, you'll also get in Conquest as you defend Osgiliath while playing as Faramir or when you take control of the Balrog and rummage through the mines of Moria. Even these moments, though, are tampered by some really funky combat. Characters move and transition between animations extremely slowly. Everyone has a ton of health, and a few classes can block every attack, with the exception of special heavy attacks. Individual fights become prolonged and often feel and look pretty clumsy. There's no way of locking onto enemies, so it can get tricky pointing your character in the right direction. It's easy to miss enemies entirely. So um, you can watch The Hobbit first. The Hobbit, like, watching The Hobbit after watching Lord of the Rings is painful. So watch The Hobbit first. That's the chronological order, too. The Hobbit, then Lord of the Rings. So watch The Hobbit first, then watch Lord of the Rings, and you'll be much happier because The Hobbit is painful to fucking get through once you already have, like, the quality standard of Lord of the Rings in your head. So when you finally do get to play as Aragorn, Gimli, or Legolas, the combat constrains them. Not to say they aren't powerful, they are. Both heroes and villains have unique attacks, many of which look really cool. But the plotting combat system slows even them down, and in some cases can reduce how useful they are. Now, for all of Conquest's faults, its four classes, I think, are where things get really interesting. Warriors are your main frontline fighters. Mages provide support along with both medium and close quarters attacks. Archers attack from afar, and scouts are an alternate frontline fighter with a bit weaker assortment of attacks, but also with the ability to turn invisible. These classes play closer to a hero shooter, where each one is linked by a system of checks and balances. This is a deviation from Yeah, The Hobbit should have maybe been at most two movies, but they tried to make it three, and it was really unnecessary. Battlefront, wherein the classes had roles, but I wouldn't say they were necessarily designed to cancel each other out. The clone army, for example, in Battlefront, has a few ways of combating the CIS's droidica, but not necessarily a single class made for the sole purpose of countering it. Battlefront's factions and their unique classes are asymmetric but balanced. This foundational approach to team design changes with Conquest. While the evil and good factions have different heroes that might play differently, their classes each pretty much stay the same. Archers don't do a ton of damage, but they also have unlimited ammo. Warriors and scouts do have short-range throwables, but no way to defend themselves from archers at a distance. This is where mages come in. Not only can they heal allies, but they can also cast a bubble shield that's impenetrable to all ranged attacks while allowing friendly attacks to pass through. Mages and archers do have limited melee ability, but don't have a way to block melee attacks. This means they'll either need protection or to keep their distance from enemies. It's a rock, paper, scissors system that isn't unlike a lot of popular yeah, games Yeah, this today. game was fun, I bro. I played it at a friend's house who had a 360. I never owned it, but yeah, I used to play this all the time at one of my friend's houses. Interesting discussion to be had regarding the balance between player autonomy and back in the middle school days. Open-ended but deeply interconnected multiplayer. At what point is it developed? Back when I had a shitty PS3. We're putting too much weight on a player to communicate. At what point does asking players to? Wasn't this game Xbox exclusive, or was it on PlayStation 3 as well? I don't fucking remember ever seeing it on PlayStation 3 organize themselves become an act of futility. If Conquest had better combat, I think it would be a fascinating game to consider while exploring those questions, but its flaws really drag it down. And for what balance there is, there's a lot that feels unbalanced. A scout's invisibility, even while it doesn't last very long, allows them to perform a backstab, which can instantly kill almost all enemies, including a lot of heroes, and there's no way to defend against it. Ultimately, Conquest fails to meet the totality of Battlefront spectacle. Even in multiplayer, many of the maps still carry that linearity with them. The Battle of the Pelennor Fields is squeezed into a narrow pathway that leaves little room for creative tactics, and all of Osgiliath's winding alleyways, debris, rooftops, and bridges are reduced to essentially a single looping road. Conquest's maps don't have the diversity or creativity seen in Battlefront, which really is too bad considering how well made Battlefront's maps were. This could have been a design limitation, being that the majority of fights are close quarters it makes sense not to build maps as spacious as those in Battlefront or else you might spend more time running toward enemies than actually fighting them. But again, size was only an element of Battlefront's phenomenal map design, not the crux of it.
Unfortunately, Conquest would be Pandemic's penultimate game, as the studio shuttered in 2009, months after Conquest released. And it's hard not to wonder how or if things could have been different had Conquest fulfilled the potential it had. Electronic Arts, Conquest's publisher, closed down support for its online servers in March 2010, 13 months after the game initially yep. released. It was part of a wider group of games losing online support that, at the time, EA said constituted only 0.3% of peak online players across all EA titles. When I play something like Doom 2016 or the Resident Evil 2 remake, both games whose origins can be traced back more than a decade, I think that if contemporary versions of old arena shooters and survival horror games can be made today and be good, why couldn't the original Battlefronts be made, and by extension, Conquest? Even with all its deep flaws, I don't see Conquest as a game that never stood a chance. Its formula is one that worked back in 2004 and 2005, it worked in 2009, and in recent years, I've become more confident it could be recreated today. Maybe I'm tripping, but I remember that this game was bad. There was a period where the world was in full Tolkien swing, with a successful film franchise and a ton of video games set in the Lord of the Rings universe. Although things have since slowed down, Snowblind Studios seems primed to bring the franchise back with the Lord of the Rings The War in the North an original story set during the same time period as the beloved books. War in the North combines three-player co-op combat with some substantial bloodshed, but repetitive combat and boring characters will do little to put you back into that Middle-Earth state of mind. War in the North puts players in control of a team of three warriors, a human ranger, an elven mage, and a dwarven warrior. While a separate story, War in the North does have you meeting up with some well-known characters from the books, including Aragorn, the once and future king himself, and others. But while War in the North does get props for attempting to add a new chapter to the Lord of the Rings story, the characters and their quest are a bit on the bland side. You won't find yourself very invested in their stories, and their one-dimensional personalities aren't likely to draw you into the experience. The game sports a pretty solid visual style, taking cue from the film franchise in both character models and environmental design. While some of the special effects are a little plain, the overall look is well done. Let us stand and fight together! <laughs> As an action RPG, War in the North features many conventions that will be familiar to fans of the genre. You'll have access to side quests, shops, and blacksmiths that will repair busted equipment, as well as NPCs. Yeah, that that's what I thought. This game was just like from. really However, not once good. However, step out of the game's hub towns, the experience is all action and loot. The game was created with a three-player co-op experience in mind, and to that end, the experience works pretty well. You can team up online through System Link or through local co-op, utilizing each of their specific skill sets and moves in tandem. Each character also has race-specific abilities that let you find special hidden treasure chests and loot. However, playing alone isn't quite the seamless experience you might hope it would be. You can't switch characters on the fly, and you have to wait until the end of each section to take control of a different warrior. This is problematic because the only way you can adjust your warrior's armor and level them up is by having direct control of them. While there are workarounds, namely closing out your game and using the title screen to select a new character, those lack finesse. Additionally, you can not issue orders to your AI comrades. While they do a pretty competent job of taking out enemies and healing you when you need it, having the ability to manage them would definitely be helpful. And while the combat is certainly bloody, especially for a Lord of the Rings game, it's also repetitive. You'll fight off legions of the same orcs over and over again, and the combat system lacks enough variety to keep things interesting. Whether you play as more of a melee heavy fighter, or choose to utilize more ranged attacks and special attacks, the pew, combat pew, lacks pew. much in the way of variety and doesn't do I much don't to know, stand man. out This does not look RPGs. very good. <laughs> I remember this game like just kind of getting shit on when it came out. In the end, War in the North is a solid entry to the franchise, but one that for all of its posturing, 
takes very few risks. The combat is visceral but simple and repetitive, and the storyline, while new, does little to draw you into the experience. For more on The Lord of the Rings War in the North, head over to IGN.com. 7GN? That's right, man. Masterpiece. There you go. Lord of the Rings warned the Norworth worth playing in 2022. It's no, it's not. Absolute masterpiece of a game, bro. Hell nah. Both of the five, um, without Sauron's army, Gandalf could destroy his tower pretty easily as Gandalf the White. When he is just an eye, his army is the main threat. So, let's get our glasses on, everyone. So, you all can tell me if I'm wrong or not, but at the end of The Lord of the Rings, Sauron is not actually dead, right? His power is just so greatly diminished that he basically can't even take like a form like the eye. Like, he already can't take physical form without the ring. But, basically, his power becomes so diminished he's not even able to take, like, the eye form. But eventually, he would regain his power and be able to come back, essentially. So, I guess my question is... Is, would it even matter if Gandalf destroyed the tower? Like, would it actually fucking do anything? Person with the two, can you silence your favorite thought? I don't have a favorite thought. And also, all sound. Uh, if you want to mute somebody, it's 10 bucks, but I, I don't know who you want me to mute. I don't have a favorite thought. No thoughts allowed. But, yeah, I can do an ear rape. Please, so I have to do it to shut them the fuck up. Jesus fucking Christ. Fuck all of you. Shut the fuck up. Don't you fucking tell me to my face to shut the fuck up. Bruh. That's a good ear rape. I'd say so too. I gave it my best shot, guys. Yes, Sauron didn't fully die. That's what I thought, because, like, technically, whatever that fucker's name, Morgoth or whatever, like, he's not dead either. He's just, like, vanished. Alright, let me just go see if everything is good up here, and then I'll close out of Minecraft. I just want to check this real quick. Yeah, once the ring is destroyed, like, a large portion of his power is destroyed, but he's not actually dead. He's just, like, so weak he can't do anything. Yep, everything looks good up here. Cool. Yep, 
Yep, I'm gonna stream on a Starfield tomorrow. Alright, so let me close out of that. At 5 p.m. Ah, I probably won't be on at like 8 my time. No, I'll probably be on later. Dude, I'm going to be honest. I'm not like, oh my god, bro, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. Like, I, I'm not excited for the game. So I'm, I'm not going to be like getting on at 8 p.m. to stream it the second it goes live. I'll probably just get on at a normal time that I would. Because I'll still be walking my dog and some stuff like that. But, yeah. I don't know. I need to buy the uh, premium edition. If you buy the premium edition on PC, does it, like, transfer over to the uh, Xbox version, I assume? Let me check. Because I may just go ahead and buy it before I forget. Then I'm not, like, last minute and the Xbox store crashes and I'm like, oh, shit, dude, I can't fucking buy it. Store, Starfield Premium Edition. Where's the upgrade? That's all I want. Starfield Premium Edition content. Where is it? Thirty five bucks, bro. God damn. All right, let me put it on here. I'm going to buy it real quick. I just don't want there to be like a pop-up. It's like, oh, enter your credit card information. <laughs> buy. I think I can push it to my uh, console to install. Pre-install. Can I pre-install it on a console? I don't think so. They used to have that feature where you could install it on a console, but I think you have to do that on the mobile app, right? Yeah, I think so. All right, well, I got it pre-ordered now, so. Oh, we Gucci. Yeah, I saw it said uh, play anywhere, so we're good uh person with the 10 read some article about blackrock maybe ditching yeah oh they're not going to the only way they're going to is if they have to legally and what are your thoughts uh i will believe it when i see it the only way they're actually going to do that is maybe in the case of like pension funds but that's about it and big plans for the long weekend mm, not really man i've had this whole week off and i haven't done shit so probably not and mute yourself and me. You can pick one. Do you want me to mute you or me? I'm guessing you want me to mute myself. But just let me know real quick. Myself? Yeah, I figured as much. All right, I'll be back.
All right, guys. Uh, Daryl Sun with the two, I can wait a week for Starfield, to be honest. Yeah, I probably could, too. Only reason I bought it early is to stream it. So I can have everybody decide to, uh... Give me monies! And I saw <laughs> the ten. Appreciate it, man. We can check it out. And the Wolf with the Five, Sauron is weakened forever, but another evil force will eventually rise. Yeah. Or he could, you know, gluck gluck the power out of something else, right? And I don't fucking know. But, I mean, that's where the Lord of the Rings, like, whole universe kind of ends, right? I don't think Tolkien wrote really much after that in terms of, like, long term. It was kind of like the uh, ending, so to speak, of, like, the universe. But, yeah. Look, Griffin, Sonic. Oh my god, bro, I love Sonic. I guess we can start with, uh... Oh, yeah, shit. I didn't hit down. I guess we can watch this. Let's see what this is. Well, this is going to be a quick one. For those of you who were hoping I would make a review that was under 30 minutes, I think this time you'll get exactly what you wanted. Armored Core 6, or as some have come to calling it, Armored Core 6 out of 10 is probably the worst game from software has made since Dark Souls 2. I agree. Now, as some. Dude, FromSoft needs to stick to Souls games. Armored Core ain't it. Someone who kind of likes Dark Souls 2, that doesn't mean that it's a bad game, it's definitely not a bad game. Even though I don't give scores in these videos, it is a bit higher than a 6 out of 10, but it certainly did not blow my mind. There's gonna be a lot of people disappointed with this game, especially people who watched Vati Vidya and expected this to be Armored Souls, Robot yeah. Souls, Mech Souls. Dude, I watched that fucking video, and he was, like, trying to sell it like a Souls game, and it's like, bro, ain't no way. Which, why the hell would you ever think that? You could literally just look up on YouTube what Armored Core gameplay looks like. But modern from software fans are basically NPCs. So I know exactly that. what fucking video he's talking about too. I watched that Vadi video, like video. Dude, I'm gonna be honest. Vadi video kind of fell off, bro. There's so many better lore channels now. They wanted yet another game that is press circle to win. And as someone who doesn't really play mech games and never played an Armored Core before this one, I can't really compare it to the old ones, so I'm mainly going to be comparing it to the mech games I have played, Zone of the Enders 1 and 2, and more importantly to this review, Custom Robo and Custom Robo Arena. So yeah, this is going to be another review that is clearly a mixed bag, and usually when a game is not overwhelmingly amazing, I tend to lean negative. So just know that going in before I further trigger any more of the From Software fanboys. Alright, without further ado, here is Armored Core 6. So yeah, first off, it's important to repeat yet again, this is not a Souls game. It has some minor Souls-like elements to it because From Software just has a certain way of designing video games that tends to work, so it makes sense that they keep doing that over and over again. Like I was saying in the intro, this is sort of like a combo of Zone of the Enders and Custom Robo. It has the part customization of Custom Robo, and it has sort of that fast-paced lock-on gameplay of Zone of the Enders, but with a much heavier focus on ranged combat, where Zone of the Enders was much more melee-focused. So to explain what that means, instead of you being this huge, lumbering, slow-paced mech a la Battletech, this is much more like Gundam, where the robots are basically giant humans with giant guns and swords. I've heard people describe the controls of this game as moving a refrigerator on roller skates, and <laughs> it's actually pretty appropriate, though with the addition of said refrigerator also having a jetpack. It's all about circle strafing around enemies, and in the case of a lot of the bosses flying directly above them to get out of the way of their massive melee attacks, and as you're circle strafing, you're constantly firing one of the four weapons attached to you at any given time. 
that range from pretty much all sorts of conventional weaponry you've seen throughout video games. Machine guns, shotguns, handguns, missiles, pulse weapons, I could go on and on. You kind of get the idea, you can just watch the gameplay and get a pretty good feel for it. And each of these weapons have to reload or they can overheat, so you sort of have to manage between your light weapons and heavy weapons, what ones to use, and what proximities they're good at. I mainly use close range weapons for most of the game. And to talk a bit more about customizing your armor. The course, final boss like of I the said, game was Cancer. Nice. That reminds me of Custom Robo. On top of having those four weapon slots, you also can customize the head, torso, arms, legs. Your booster, generator, even the aim assist can be customized. And what you can equip to your robot is determined by the generator and your legs, which affect the maximum equip loads for energy and weight. And as you would probably imagine, the lighter robots move a lot faster than the heavier robots, but at the cost of having a lot less defense and a lot less health. So it definitely feels like your customization options matter. Now one way I actually prefer custom robo style is that the array of weaponry feels a lot more varied since that game had a bit more of a cartoon or toy like style. So the guns could do all sorts of different stuff, whereas armored cores are much more conventional and there's very few weapons that aren't just a variation on a type of gun, right? Like an energy rifle is just a sniper that is a laser. But they're not all like that. Plasma weapons leave like an area of effect field for a while. And there's a bunch of different type of homing missiles and all kinds of different variations of speeds, numbers fired, the time in between salvos, etc, etc. I'm certainly not disappointed by the amount of options they give you to customize your mech, but the game certainly could have benefited from a few extra unique types. A lot of the extra parts you find are just slight variations on other weapons. One of the most important ways that this is not a Souls game is that the Dodge doesn't have invincibility frames. And this is going to be such a massive adjustment for people used to playing these press circle to win games that they're probably going to rage quit or get disinterested based on that principle alone. Me, I was completely tired of that shit, so I'm fine with it but it definitely took some time to get used to it. The way you're strafing and the direction you're dodging might actually be more important than when you dodge, if that makes sense. Especially to avoid homing missiles or some super fast lasers that some of the bosses shoot. You're gonna take so much chip damage that seems completely unavoidable, but it's just kind of part of the experience. It's not meant for no damage runs, though I'm sure some people will figure out a way. Oh, to I'm do sure, it. man. You have three repair kits you can use throughout a mission, much like, you know, an Estus flask. And as far as I know, you can never expand on that number, but you can improve the amount it heals, which will mainly just be important if you play as a heavier mech. No, nah, I won't be playing Lies of P. I'm not particularly interested in that. Meter, like Sekiro, where you have to build it up, and once you break the stagger meter, the enemy is stunned for a couple seconds, and the actual stagger gauge stays broken for several seconds after they're stunned, and all of your weapons do increase damage while they're staggered. This is something I've seen as one of the major criticisms against the game, that they focus so much on the breaking stagger stuff, that it sort of breaks the flow of gameplay because everything becomes centered around breaking that stagger. Dude, gauge Lies of P stands for Pinocchio. Using the high DPS weapons, and you basically fight every mini boss and boss the exact same way because of that. Now this actually makes it a bit more like a Souls game than maybe previous entries were because Geppetto, then it becomes I'm a more real about boy. learning the boss move sets and how to dodge the attacks than it does about using specific strategies. But as we'll get into a little bit later, each one of the bosses encourages a certain type of build that is good against them. And this is something that's going to trip up Souls players because Souls players are very used to beating their head against a wall until they eventually learn how to dodge like every attack and then they win. In this game, if you have the wrong build for a boss, you're not going to win. I mean, yep. maybe eventually after hours, I've heard that two bosses in particular in this game, some people fought for several hours before beating them. Me, I'm not that stupid. After I lose seven or eight times, I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Maybe because I already had experience playing Custom Robo, which is very similar in that sense. 
I didn't get stuck on any boss for more than an hour. And fuck it, we'll talk about the bosses for a second. This game has some of the most inconsistent difficulty I've ever experienced in any video game. 90% of the time, maybe even 95%, the game is brain dead easy, you're shitting on all these fodder drones, just killing them in one hit with any of your stronger guns. And then the other 5% of the time you fight the real bosses and they're an actual challenge. Now challenge is not a problem, what is a problem is massive difficulty spikes that come out of nowhere. I've heard some people getting stuck on the tutorial boss for a really long time, which I have no idea how the hell you could be that bad at the game, I beat him on the <laughs> second try. But the first major boss after the tutorial, Baltius, who's in a fucking like gamer chair and has a force field around him and shoots a million homing missiles and halfway through the fight has a <laughs> ring of fire that he swings like an ultra great sword around him, is such a massive insane difficulty spike compared to anything before it that it is genuinely filtering people away from this game. Now, on paper, I don't have a problem with the games filtering out players. I don't care how many people end up finishing a game unless it is a quality control issue. If this boss was a representative of the difficulty of the game afterward, it would be completely fine, but it is not. The next challenging boss fight is not until like an hour later against the sea spider, which some people got stuck on for even longer. Luckily, I already had the right build going in, so I beat him in like 10 tries or something. With Baltius, once I'd failed to beat him a shit ton of times, I backed out of the mission, bought two of the pulse bubble guns, and attached a sword and a shotgun to my shoulders instead of using missiles or anything. And I used the bubbles to pop his shield and then switched to the other two guns, and I beat him in one try after that. And as for Sea Spider, I used the quad legs hover mech, as that boss has a lot of ground attacks and in the second phase has like a giant satellite laser, so staying high above it was incredibly effective. Nothing else challenged me again for several hours, for maybe a slightly unrelated reason, I don't know, well, I'll talk about that in a second, but for the most part the game is not nearly as difficult as Baltius. And speaking of inconsistent difficulty, this game sort of has the same problem, though I personally don't even think it's a problem because I had fun with it, but we'll call it a problem for the sake of people who don't want to play in a specific playstyle. For the first time since probably Dark Souls 1, playing as a heavy character is actually viable in a From Software game. I can't believe it. Playing as a tank mech was fun as fuck for me, at least for a while, because instead of being this lightweight anime toy robot that has no <laughs> weight to it whatsoever, just gliding through the air, circle strafing and dodging, I instead was just this tank that drove around and blew up everything in one hit. And so let's see, Timothy Marco with the two, why is everyone always ready to hop on Souls clones? Because it's like the hot new genre, bro. You know, multiplayer shooters was the hot thing back in the 360 era. Then it transitioned to third person, you know, open world games. Now we're on to fucking Souls clones. The Wolf with the Five, this guy is saying the same Souls like lingo as Vadi. What the fuck? Well, I mean, I think he's just trying to draw parallels for people. I don't know. And had an insane amount of health and defense that I could just brute force my way through a bunch of challenges throughout the game. I think I ended up beating four out of the five next bosses in one try without really learning their moveset by just brute forcing it with the tank because I could overload their stagger meters before they could overload mine. And if you were curious, yes, I did end up using the tank build for the rest of the game, only swapping out double mini guns for double long range shotguns, which were absurdly good for some reason. And the only time the second half of the game even remotely challenged me was against the Coral Guardian boss, which is just absolutely fucking insane. I don't know how the hell you would beat this boss with a normal lightweight mech. That just sounds like absolute torture. The thing is a fucking bullet hell boss in a game with no invincibility frames and no way to dodge directly upward, which is kind of strange. I feel like that would have been very useful here. And I even struggled a little bit with the tank at first, so I tried a lightweight build, and I just got annihilated over and over again. So I just did what I did for the rest of the game, and just gunned the robot down as fast as possible, and eventually that worked. It was such a giant pain in the ass, dude. 
it just isn't really fun after a certain point yes i'm sure if you're really fucking good at the game and you build the most lightweight mech and you memorize every single fucking attack all the homing lasers and giant sword slashes that track your movement perfectly etc etc that eventually you'll beat both forms of the boss but it is a million times easier to just load up a tank with the highest stagger damage weapons and just kill the thing in like one minute Again, it was another insane difficulty spike over all of the previous content from the last five hours before it. Even though the final boss probably had twice as much health as it did, it was a fairly normal fight all things considered, so this fucking coral robot thing was a piece of shit, I hated it, terrible boss. So I've been fairly positive with this game so far, why are people so disappointed? Well, there's a few major reasons, I'd say. The first one being that this game is very basic. You're doing the exact same thing from the start of the game to the end. You pick a mission, you kill all the robots in that mission, most of which are complete pushovers and easy, and then you go on to the next mission. It reminds me a bit of Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, in that the game takes a very basic... Yeah, I don't know, dude. This is just not really my type of game at all. All, like, everything I'm hearing, it just kind of sounds like... Yeah, I don't think I would pick this up for anything more than 20 bucks. Except and then you just do that thing for the entire game. There's not a whole lot of other elements like exploration or environmental challenges, though there are a few missions where the environmental hazards are kind of most of the difficulty of it, like giant laser beams from the sky or a bunch of missile traps and tripwire lasers and things. But for the most part, if you're playing this to get a challenge, you're just trying to grind your way to getting to the next boss as fast as possible. And the arena fights are all kind of brain dead easy if you pick a tank build. I basically just ran in their face and spammed either the double miniguns or the double flamethrowers. And because I had effectively triple the health they did, I won every time. So the arena wasn't all that fun and it's incredibly necessary to do because you can only unlock a bunch of upgrades through the arena so you got to do it on the one hand i really like basic games that you just do the same thing from start to finish as long as the game gets progressively more difficult or interesting in some way throughout but like i said the difficulty is so inconsistent in this and eventually you're going to start seeing the same maps over and over again there's not a unique one for each mission that the game did start to sort of feel repetitive past like the 10 hour mark i'll say and the game's about 15 hours, but there is a new game plus, and new game plus adds more parts, more missions that no doubt are harder. I haven't done any of them yet, that's just what other people are saying. So it's not like the game has an issue of content. I have no problem with a full price release having 15 hours plus some extra stuff if you want to play the game again. It's more just about this game obviously has a middleware feel to it that anybody who's played a bunch of video games will notice almost immediately. Yeah, it doesn't really feel like it's quite at that triple A quality standard. Definitely. That makes sense to me. That's kind of the feel I get. Like when you have a Souls game or, you know, fucking Elden Ring or something, you have a ton of content there, you have a ton of replayability, and the game feels premium. This kind of feels like B tier. Just from the look of it. So obviously for a lot of people, that's not going to feel worth it full price, right? And if you're wondering if the story or the lore is any good, I'll admit I wasn't paying that much attention, but it seems pretty bare bones. You're basically playing as a mercenary in the far future, and the planet is called Rubicon, so obviously it is very important, and all of these different mega corporations are fighting over it. And since you're an independent mercenary, you end up working for different companies at different times. But honestly, I don't even remember why the planet is important. That's how forgettable the story was. I imagine it was basically the plot of Dune. They have like this special fucking space mineral that's needed to wage war and it's only harvestable on this planet. It has some kind of unique resources or something, maybe it has something to do with the coral, which is like some kind of weird mysterious energy or something, and your AI girlfriend comes from the coral and I don't even know man what's even going on half the time. For the most part I was just concerned with going in, killing robots, getting paid, going on to the next mission. 
Oh yeah, and I'm sure somebody's going to ask about PvP. Yes, I'm aware there is PvP. No, I didn't play any of it. I really did not care to. So I've got nothing to say about it. So in conclusion, should you buy Armored Core 6? Probably at a discount. It is a decently fun game, but it is also a repetitive game, and some people are just not going to like this style of gameplay. It doesn't appeal to this massive lowest common denominator that Elden Ring did, and that's a good thing. That's definitely a good thing, but I do wish that this was a more polished game that had more to it than just like going in a mission, killing some fodder robots, and then every once in a while getting a real challenge. That said, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I had fun. I definitely had fun with this game. I like simplistic games where you just do the same thing over and over again as long as it is very fun and it remains engaging the whole time. You've got to throw unique environmental challenges or different enemy types that make you play differently. This game did some of that but certainly not enough of that. And nobody likes to be randomly super challenged out of nowhere, especially when the rest of the gameplay requires very little skill. Just having that 5 to 10% of the time where you actually have to try and get good is just not good gameplay design by really any metric. I don't know how you could argue yeah. in favor of that kind. And the biggest problem with that, too, is it's not a game where it's like your skills progressively build on each other because you have to constantly swap out your mech parts. So every single mission, you almost have to approach relearning the game. So it's not like you spend two to three missions with a certain weapon, learning how to master that weapon in a way so that you're presented with this ultra hard challenge that like tests your understanding of the game mechanics thus far. It's like, well, you could have played every single mission in the game completely fucking different up until that point. Then all of a sudden you're supposed to pick up these new components and play the game like you've never played it before at like a top tier level. And that's where I agree, and that's why I didn't like Armored Core 5, is because you had to fucking do that shit. It's like you basically had to, like, fucking relearn the game for each individual boss or challenge within the game. I don't know. Not for me, personally. Kind of difficulty design. It makes no real sense. So in that way, this is definitely not a Souls game. Souls games are infamous for any enemy being able to kill you, and that only became more true as the series went on. In this, 90% of the robots are drones that you can kill in like one hit. So like I said earlier in the review, this is kind of like a combination of Zone of the Enders and Custom Robo, with a dash of Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker level design thrown in there but with the actual sandbox maps being much larger, not linear hallways, right? But you get the point, it's mission-based design, and occasionally you get a real challenge. And yeah, if you like that type of game, you'll probably like this, and I actually do kind of like that type of game. It just didn't quite meet the standards that I have for From Software these days. That's why I said it's like the worst game they've made since Dark Souls 2, but even Dark Souls 2 is not a bad game. It's a decently enjoyable game, it's just... You compare it to Dark Souls 1, and you're fucking mind blown that it's the same company, even if it was a different team. And I get the feeling people are going to think that about this game. They're going to think about Elden Ring that they played last year, and a bunch of Zoomer normies thought it was one of the best games ever made. But then they're going to play this and be mind blown that such a fucking middleware budget game could be made by these guys, because they probably didn't play any of From Software's games made before Dark Souls 3. Yep. Unfortunately, in the modern AAA space, you're and just that's not the audience they were banking on is you know Dark Souls Three and Elden Ring customers. That's what they were hoping for is like that audience would bleed over into Armored Core. Make a lower budget game anymore. That's why every game takes like five years to come out because normies want to play the quadruple A cinematic slop. Even when they want to play Elden Ring, which is all gameplay, the things that they really like about the game just kind of confuse me. Having to fight the same boss five times over and over again in the actual open world had no notable, memorable characters or quest lines. It was just basically an empty wasteland where you just went to the occasional dungeon and killed shit. That got old to me. Apparently, that's the best game ever made to some people for some reason. For me, I want something like Dark Souls 1 again, and it just seems- Dark Souls 1 and 3 are way better than Elden Ring.
seems like from software is never going to make that game again but i was very happy that armored core was something different even if it wasn't exactly what i wanted i like custom robo i like this and if you did like this game i'm sure you're probably going to play the other armored cores or at least try them but a personal recommendation for me would be custom robo on the gamecube zone of the enders 2 and after you've played those i'd say custom robo arena on ds was surprisingly good though you're definitely going to want to emulate that shit nobody wants to play on a tiny ds screen in the current year so yeah hopefully you liked and enjoyed this shorter review i know i enjoyed making a shorter video even though i know it will get less views and I know a shit ton of my audience now apparently only cares if a game is woke or not and not if the game's actually good. So, <laughs> yeah, I figure this one's not going to do all that well, but Starfield is about to come out. So I was happy to just cover a game really quickly to have some content for this week because it's probably going to take me like two weeks to make the Starfield video, I imagine. Hopefully Starfield is not another one of the biggest gaming disappointments in history like Fallout 4 was to me like eight years ago now. So that's about it. See you next time, guys. All right. So we can get rid of that, 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 that. What did I want to watch? Oh, yeah. Here we go, man. What's up, Gaber? Streamcast guy here, talking today about PlayStation Plus. He's got to talk shit about Daddy Sony. In the debate of Xbox versus PlayStation, one of the biggest topics is how Sony and Microsoft handle subscription services. Obviously, if you get an oh, Xbox, you, you might as follow. well get Game Pass. This gives Damn, you man. every single... I just put my feet down because I've had like legs, like I guess, crossed up in like my chair off the ground. And I went to put my feet down, and Apollo was, like, laying down on the floor right underneath my feet. And I put my foot down, and I felt something furry. I was like, yo, what the fuck? Creepy. First party Xbox game, day and date. Starfield, Forza, Hi-Fi Rush, Redfall. You know, if you like some really bad games, everything comes day and date. The second it's out, it's on Game Pass. And PlayStation, they clearly liked the idea of this. For the last year, they have introduced a tiered system to PlayStation Plus that gives you better indie games, stuff like Stray. And yeah, what's that shit called? The Powhatan pose, whatever the fuck, where you like have your legs crossed. I don't fucking know. But yeah, I cross my legs in my chair. The masterpiece Sea of Stars. I have since I was a child. Out. These are pretty good, but I also like the retro games which are part of playstation plus premium that lets you play playstation 1 playstation 2 because of that my legs are actually super fucking flexible like i can do that thing where you put your uh, ankles behind your head and shit's really easy for me like i've always had really flexible hips because if i always like i've always sat this way so two playstation 3 what can i say man games on there well today randomly they have announced this new service is getting a big price increase. Every single tier of PlayStation Plus is getting way more expensive, and this is undoubtedly a Sony L. But let's discuss. Hi, hope you're having a great day. No, if I can't do like the splits. Video and subscribe if you haven't already. So but, honestly, yeah. I was actually originally taking a look at this just to discuss the idea of PlayStation Plus in 2023. And they said, hey, here's your monthly games for September. But when I started to really go through this, when I started to actually click the PlayStation blog, down here you can see that the monthly game is Saints Trash. Do, Black Desert Online, which is an MMO. $3. Zero. Oh, wait, here's something they just tucked at the bottom with no fanfare, no announcement, nothing to draw your attention to it. We wanted to let Griffin you know that the gymnastics is expert. 6th, Hell no, bro. I ain't Spider Twink. The price of the PlayStation Plus 12-month subscription globally. 
This is all the different tiers. Now I did the math. This is a 33%. Yep, I just tried it. I can still put my uh, foot behind my head. Price increase. If you want just essential, this is just basic online play. This is basic cloud saves. That's nothing else. That is now $80 a year. PlayStation Plus Extra, which is how you get the indie games and a lot of the cool, like, uh, that's a lot of these basic games you're getting right here. That is now going to be $135 a year, which is, again, I mean, it literally cost 100 bucks before this. Such a huge price increase. PlayStation Plus Premium, which is what I have been subscribed to for the last year, now costs $160. Now, people are immediately pissed. And I think a lot of it is because of this, which in my opinion is a flat out lie. This price adjustment will enable us to continue bringing high quality games and value added benefits to your PlayStation Plus subscription service. Now, you have to admit that it's pretty ironic to claim they're increasing the price to increase the quality of games in a month where they're giving us Saints Row which is one of the most hated games of the last couple of years. Exactly. Looking at every reply, people are saying massive L. Everybody is just being like, wow, this is just absolutely stinky bad. Man, I, I'm actually impressed the fact that <laughs> Rick Flairhorn, $80 to access the internet connection you already pay for. Sure, they're giving you access to games, but you don't get to pick those. This is is just insane a lot of people are definitely the most annoyed at the essential tier 80 dollars just to be able to play online is loot there some of the two why dreamcast guy says plague station like that i don't know bro he's got a very unique way to speak ludicrous to say the least i decided to tweet out my own dissatisfaction with this because it just seems like such a bad time for this move and i basically just said that it's a huge sony l and i got this reply that kind of struck me which this person just suggests we gotta hit them in their wallet that's what talks money talks yeah their prison wallet bro so if they're in Send us a pic, Griff, of you putting your feet behind your head. You got to go to my OnlyFans for that, man. I ain't giving that shit out for free. Increasing it and you don't like it, maybe it's time to walk away from PlayStation Plus, at least for a bit. Now, part of what's so confusing about this, to be honest, is that I follow these numbers a lot. I actually track growth and market data. I mean, not only do I review a lot of games, but part of my job is just tracking the gaming industry to do my daily gaming uploads. And it's weird that right now, all game subscription service has stalled. Essentially, what's happening is that nobody knew. People have subscription fatigue. It's not just gaming subscriptions. It's fucking music subscriptions. It's TV and movie subscriptions. It's fucking food subscriptions. It's clothing subscriptions. Costco subscriptions. Like, you literally have a subscription to fucking everything. And every single subscription has increased their price like 10%. Well, now Sony just increased it 33%. So they're the largest increase that I've seen. But, I mean, you literally have a subscription for fucking everything, dude. It's ridiculous at this point. Buying into these services. People that have Game Pass are continuing to pay for Game Pass. People that are still using PlayStation Plus are still using PlayStation Plus, but new people are not exactly flooding the market. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to go, wow, you're being pretty hard on Sony. Were you hard on Microsoft when they did the same thing? Well, yes, I was. I actually roasted the hell out of freaking Xbox because they're increasing the price of the Xbox Series X and Game Pass. So this sucks. Increasing the price of your subscription services is just such a huge L. And here's the other part of it. It turns out some people are actually leaking that they're paying less as well. If you put your indie game on PlayStation Plus or Xbox... Do I do yoga? No, nah, only when I put your mom in Downward Dog, bro. Box Game Pass, apparently... The only sub I'm paying for is World of Warcraft? Bruh. Crazy. Sony and Microsoft are paying less. This is causing a lot of these deals to dry up. That means that 
if this doesn't work, if this doesn't pay off in the long run, that means that we're going to be paying more for PlayStation Plus, but getting less out of it. This is not some vague assumption. This is the direct math we're dealing with. And it's just sort of disappointing to me because in the past, I do think that PlayStation Plus has been good. I have been excited. Dude, I fucking told y'all this shit wasn't profitable. Like, there's no way they can continue paying developers and releasing day and date games and Game Pass and it remain profitable. There's just no fucking way. It doesn't make financial sense. For the idea that PlayStation is finally putting retro games on their service. I like the PlayStation 4 and I like the PlayStation 5, but I'm a nostalgia guy. I like the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 a lot. In fact, there was even this random piece of news that came out this morning that they're working on some sort of new PlayStation emulator for PS2 games to be even bigger, even better, maybe giving us even more PlayStation 2 games in the future. It sucks. And honestly, this is, I just feel like- Shit, maybe I am immature and inexperienced, Brit. But yeah, I agree. Nobody is going to win from this. Reddit is already being like, okay, that's a $20 price increase just for base level PSN. The lowest quality thing is getting a huge price increase. This, this is just so stupid. A good reminder to cancel my subscription. It wasn't worth it for me at the previous price, so definitely not now. This is a bummer. Then why did you have the subscription in the first place, you stupid fucking Redditor? If it wasn't worth it for the previous price and not now, why didn't you already cancel it, you fucking dipshit? It's been... Everybody's just talking about... Oh, wow, this is an interesting take. Someone's like, I was thinking about upgrading my subscription to go to the higher tier and getting more benefits. Now, I'm definitely not. PlayStation, what was the purpose of this? Like, in the grand... A 30% increase in subscription revenue, basically overnight. In the scheme of things, this is something that kind of drives me nuts about just the way that the economy works in general. The way... Of <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go. Why is it that rich guys always get off when the little people, like, remember his rant in the fucking uh, Soldier Boy video where he raged against rich people? A lot of these big companies think they have to have infinite growth. You yep. can't just have a good game. You can't just have a profitable game. You can't just make billions of dollars. You have to make all the money forever. It yep. It sucks that PlayStation isn't content with their games selling 20 million copies. They're not content with the PlayStation 5 being the biggest console on the planet. They also have to continually increase the price of their subscription service, even if the product itself doesn't suddenly get better. This sucks. And I want to go a step further and say, don't defend this. If your team, if you're one of those people that's a diehard Xbox defender, because I see those people in the comments, if you're a super obsessive Sony pony, which I guess I kind of even, don't even like that term, to be honest. I feel like Sony pony is thrown around constantly. Don't defend this. This stuff is bad for gamers. That's Cheap right, guys. Games are good because we need to rise up or people get to play them. Big, incredible products that don't have battle passes and microtransactions are good for the industry. We should want the best. And this ain't it, Chief. But what do you guys think? Are you excited for the future That's of PlayStation? That's right, sister. Or does this just seem like an obvious L? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up. Share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. By the way, I am going to have a big Starfield video up on Friday, so uh, be ready for that. It's going to be, uh, I'm sure that the comment section is going to be very pleasant. If you uh -huh. like Starfield, you're evil. If you don't like Starfield, you're evil. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, uh -oh. you can always click this link to see what I... I guess Dreamy's been feeling the heat. People have been shitting on his Starfield. Takes. I don't know, man. Damn, dude. I'm fucking tired.
I may get off a little early tonight since, uh, oh shit. Since, uh, I'll be staying up late, you know. Gaming. Tomorrow. I assume that's what we'll probably be doing the majority of the stream, if not the entire time. I fingered my rear and it gets is gaming. Dick in my booty. What the hell? And I don't expect so weird. What the fuck? Another one up there, bro. So we that can kid's weird. weird. You're weird. You're such an old man. Oh my god, thanks. Weird. And the booty that you saw on tape was raw. It was unfiltered. What is you talking about, my nigga? What the fuck is this nigga saying? This dude is weird. This nigga is he's reading the Bible. I should have swallowed the cum. What did he say? Nigga said he wanted to swallow the cum. And they probably would you face fuck a midget? Yeah. I am horny. If she bad, bro. <laughs> Yo, isn't that an actual thing though? Like the top earner on OnlyFans right now is an actual fucking midget. Like unironically, no joke. I believe the number one like content creator on OnlyFans currently is a fucking midget. Yo, you hear this kid's mic, bro? <laughs> The goal of my booty is always to suck the same nigga twice to push the booty. Hey, yo, this thing is weird. Booties. Bro, <laughs> fuck my nigga, you gay. You, you a Every gay motherfucker. You know that shit? Yo, Black, I just gotta say that was a that was a really nice speech. It, it really it really inspired me. And I don't expect mm -hmm. one has an explosive round right there. Be careful. So we oh, that awesome. was Shut the fuck up. There's a lot of booty <laughs> that, I that I didn't. I'm muting you. And for that. From the hole in my well, you did say Nick Fuentes was short. What the fuck are you talking about, Britt? But I don't think he's making as much as you think. Huh? He makes like a couple hundred thousand a year. My booty. I am horny. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, he doesn't make as much as I think. He gets uh, showered in uh, super shekels when he streams. I wanna apologize oh, to the checks. I wanna apologize to anyone who the video. I wanna apologize to anyone who <laughs> what the fuck? touched by a straight nigga. <laughs> the niggas get their ass whipped and start switching sides. I'm confused. Of... Yeah, I don't understand what Brit's obsession with Nick Fuentes is. Unless, you know, she's trying to slide. I don't, I don't fucking know. I'm simply here to swallow guys. You didn't hear that shit? Nah, what was it? What this nigga said. What did he say? Who? And I never felt dick in my back. I think. Yeah, Britt wants to go come hunting with Nick. <laughs> yeah. You managed it, right? I'm not tripping, right? <laughs> you, made, you made me feel like I was tripping at first, bro. Bro, I didn't hear him. Thought I was hearing shit, bro. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And the booty that you saw on tape was raw. It was unfiltered. Oh, yeah, this why, is why, Brit, go up to Nick Fuentes and be like, I'm blonde, I have blue eyes, and I want to save the white race, and he'll literally drop everything for you. The I'm fuck's sure. wrong with this kid, fam? <laughs> Yo, Black Paladin, what are you saying? I'm just here to swallow guys. I'm not you mean Paladin? Myself. Where the hell do you get Paladin? Paladin. Paladin. <laughs> I should have swallowed the cum. <laughs> Paladin. Start getting Bro, shut up. Like <laughs> Every penis that I do, the intent is to never be straight sin nudes. Wait, Britt has blonde hair? Bro, or so, uh, Britt claims. I don't fucking know. You gotta take, uh, Britt's What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, he's so weird, bro. What the hell? <laughs> Isn't Nick Fuentes more into cat Shut femboys, Noel? Well, Britt, to be fair, most people assume anyone with a girl's name on the internet is a guy in disguise, so he'll probably think you're a femboy at first, and, like, that'll help your case. You got personal issues, man. You can't help it. Yo, bro, shut up. 
For real, bro. Oh, that is weird. It sounds like a gay version of Trump. <laughs> bro, I'm muting this black paladin guy. <laughs> if this shit doesn't stop getting played, I swear to fucking god. You know what? Okay, who is the dumbass <laughs> cunt that keeps fucking talking? <gasps> Bro, stop being gay. Welcome, bottom A, bottom A, bottom A. Yo, stop with that gay shit, bro, bro. Yup, I'm streaming Starfield tomorrow. I pre-ordered the premium edition like 45 minutes ago. So, I'll download it on my Xbox and then I'll bring my Xbox in here and I'll, I'll stream it tomorrow. And from the hole in my booty, I am running. Booty and his hole. I should have swallowed the cum. What the fuck is this dude talking about? And the booty that you saw on tape was raw, it was unfiltered. And I never. Why do you sound like that? And why is my dick getting erect? I should have swallowed the cum. Start getting horny inside the orgy too. You want to talk about it? Dick in my booty. And I don't. What? Okay. Oh, God damn. It was raw. It was unfiltered. What is happening right now? Like I said, I made a huge boner. I don't expect to be straight. Oh, you gay as fuck. Shut I'm up, just here to swallow, guys. I'm not ashamed of myself. Shut up, bro. Those you noodles on the show. Well. Just shut up. Probably need butter. Yeah, shut up. Too, cause you fucking gay. <laughs> and I don't expect condoms. That is kind of gay. Simply here to swallow, guys. That is very gay. So when we came across <laughs> the body, you, you need to you uh, discuss some things with me. That is gay. <laughs> Bro, what is you talking about, my dude? And the booty that you saw on tape was raw, it was unfiltered. And I what the fuck? Are, are you, are you singing? I don't know, but that, that was good. I kind of smacked, bro. That kind of slapped. Man, somebody call the police! Dude, it sounded like that guy who was like, Did you think that you could leave the school without first kissing my cock? You are dead wrong. That's what this fucking voice reminded me of. Yeah. Gotta report you, bro. And for that, and from the hole in my booty, I am horny. What? Oh my You've God. never what seen that meme? Oh man, hold on. If you think you can graduate from this school without kissing my cock, <laughs> you are dead drunk. <laughs> Bruh. If you think you can graduate from this school without kissing my cock, <laughs> you are dead drunk. <laughs> Bruh. That's some quality ass acting. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's kind of soothing. <laughs> like, if you don't listen to the words, it's, it's soothing. <laughs> yo, what it do, teammate? Yo, what am you I say you got a, Yo, nigga, you say you got a dig in your bag? <laughs> the fuck Bro, what the fuck? To? You say you swallowed your dad's calm? You're weird. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck women, we love guys. Yeah. Yo, so what you know. wish that you want, nigga? <laughs> Find a new hobby. Yeah, Who is playing SpongeBob in their mind? Dude, I know I've heard this children's story before. Yo, what's up with this nigga, bro? I'm playing music. Oh shit. The f <laughs> bro, an Ice Cube song was the next thing after. You think you can graduate from the school without kissing my cock? The next fucking video was an Ice Cube song. That's interesting, man. Why does it sound like he's going to cry? Bruh. 
You're weird as fuck, bro. Like, you are weird as fuck, bro. You are weird as fuck, bro. You are mad weird, Jit. You are weird. I want to apologize to anyone who's seen the video. I want to apologize to anyone who... I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Aren't you a little young for porn? Yes. Yes, I am. I saw that video, bro. What video? You heard what he said? It was unfiltered and stuff. It didn't look good. I'm simply here to swallow, guys. What's up, bro? So what we came You're here to swallow? Swallow my ass. And the what? Movie that you... Hey, if you think you can graduate from this school without kissing my cock, <laughs> you are dead wrong. All right, one more time. If you think you can graduate from this school without kissing my cock, <laughs> you are dead wrong. Yeah, I can't, like, uh, here you go. <laughs> That's a classic fucking meme. Don't worry, guys. He's talking about the school's mascot, a hawk named Mike. Yep, Mike Hawk. Yeah, who wouldn't want to kiss Mike Hawk? The fuck is that shit? Oh my god. That is so fucking lame. Dude, some retard made a fucking PewDiePie Viva La Vida cover with AI. Bruh. Holy fuck, man. That is fucking cringe. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and hop off for tonight, guys, because we're going to be playing some Starfield tomorrow, so I need my uh, energy. Because if I'm going to play video games for a prolonged period with lots of dialogue, then I need my beauty sleep. So <laughs> have a wonderful uh, day tomorrow, everyone. You know, good luck to all the uh, Xbox in the chat on the Starfield reviews. I hope they are... Uh, adequate and to your satisfaction i'm still saying around an 87 i think that's what fallout 4 hit so that's what i'm probably gonna go with but we shall see man hopefully it exceeds expectations but have a wonderful day everyone and i will talk to y'all later peace out everybody respect trans kids affirm trans rights stand with ukraine Black Lives Matter, trans visibility is valid.